There are thousands of airstrips that are dirt, grass, and mud across the United States, Canada, and the world. Many of these are inaccessible to normal aircraft. There's a certain breed of pilot who wants people to land anywhere, either for sport or by pure necessity. They're bush pilots. We practice these skills so we can be safe off airport so we can get into and out of the tight spots, the backcountry, and the unimproved fields. You'll now watch some of the best pilots in the world show you what they can do with as little as 50 feet. Not only can they take off and land off airport, they can take off and land anywhere. This is the Husky National Stoll Series. The Husky National Stole Series and Outlaw Stole are presented by Husky and Aviot Aircraft, America's favorite tail dragger. McFarland Aviation Products, thousands of parts, save thousands of dollars. 
American Legend Aircraft, not your grandfather's cub. Duke Propellers, offering a wide variety of carbon-made propellers and rotors. Sarasota Avionics, the number one aircraft avionics installer in the United States. Rugged Radios, the official communications provider of National Stoll. Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance, aviation protected. AirTech Coatings, we make paint fly. Sporty's Pilot Shops, learn to fly here. Morris Egg Air. The Fat Tire Cowboys. Yuma International Airport. And now, live from Summerton, Arizona, this is Outlaw Stoll. Part of the Husky National Stoll Series here in Summerton, Arizona. And to kick things off, if you could all please rise and remove your hats for the National Anthem. Again, welcome Woo! everybody to <laughs> oh. the Husky National Stoll Series here in Summerton, Arizona for Outlaw Stoll. I'm Ryan Dombrowski. And I'm John Jughead Council. And Brian, it is going to be an incredible day. I look up and down the line, and while we may have a lot of sand blowing right now, that's a good thing because look at these winds. We are going to see performances today that we have not seen in a National Stoll in quite some time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was uh, just chatting with someone uh, before the show started, and I was like, it's a little dusty, but I don't think the pilots are going to be complaining at all. I think the flying is going to be eye-watering enough. <laughs> we won't have any problem with, uh, with the dust in the eyes. Let's set the stage what we've got. We've got beautiful, clear skies. Right now, wind is blowing straight down the runway, but it's doing 20 gusts into 30. We've had guys out practicing this morning. Uh, Micah in his 170 doing a takeoff and landing at less than 100 feet. I guarantee you when we start watching guys like Pops Dory. A legend. Absolute legend. The Coyote Ugly. We watch Frank come in here with his new his new southern little cub, Frank Knapp, of course, of Valdez fame. And then they're going to be shooting at Yeehaw 6 and Steve Henry. We're going to see takeoff and landings that involve less than one rotation of the tire. Yeah, it's going to be super, super impressive today. I think everyone that's come out today to see us in the audience here is in for quite a show and the audience back at home and a kind of a new exciting thing we have for everybody this year as you're following along Jug and I will be bringing the scores to you as they are reported but you can also follow along live on your phone or well I don't know if anyone brought a computer nationalstoll.com slash scoring that's nationalstoll.com slash scoring you'll see live scoring updates during the competition today which is uh, that's a pretty cool thing. That is cool. And a lot of times this this competition is actually broadcast live as well for those out there that are going to be wondering on social media, watching posts. We don't have enough uh, electronic coverage here, Spectrum, to be able to feed it live. So it'll all be put together and broadcast uh, after the event. So it'll still be a great, great uh, event for you to sit back, pour yourself a cold one and watch. Looks like one of our, our last spectators is just flying in and landed. 
and uh, he got lucky. He got to land before the crowd because there's yeah. nothing more uh, nerve wracking than to be. come in and land right in front of all the people. They're gonna hold up judgment judgment cards there. So, so uh, real quick before we uh, get ready and started, Jughead, I'm wondering if you could help us understand what we're doing today because I'm guessing there's some folks who are watching or folks in the crowd who haven't been to a national stole competition before. Ryan, I absolutely will do that, but how about I do it right after this break? We can do a break. Yeah, I got that right turn, we're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. I turn four. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good little driver, straight on through. All right, Ryan, so this is how the Husky National Stole works. The airplanes are broken down by categories, which is based on its max gross takeoff weight. So we're going to have heavy touring, light touring, bush class, experimental bush, and experimental light. And it looks like the wind is already starting to give us a, a little bit of issue here with our uh, structural component on our tent, but we're going to keep on going anyway. The no, whole no, objective. Doesn't that doesn't scare us, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I'll hey, ride the, this the, thing all the, the way back to the Wisconsin. The like, I'll fly, I'll fly. <laughs> so there's a line right down here to our right. It's marked by the eight cones on each side of the runway. The pilot is going to taxi up to that line. The main gear, if it's a tailwheel airplane, the two main tires up front will be staged on that line. If it's a nose gear aircraft, like our 182s here today, or a 152, the main gear will still be used. Obviously, it's to the aft. What's going to happen is then they will go full power. They will take off, and the judges on the far side of the line here will measure where the main gear last lifted off the runway from. That's their takeoff score. They'll complete one pattern, come back in, and now they have to visually pick up that line and land past that line, bring their aircraft to a stop as quickly as they can. And they're going to use a lot of different techniques. We're going to see steep, slow approaches. We're going to see really flat using behind the power curve, induced airflow approaches. Almost everybody's going to be landing with the brakes already on and then max performing their braking effort, getting the aerodynamic lift off the wings to come to the shortest stop. It is the best takeoff and the best landing on a single pass. If they land before that line, it's a scratch. The big X, it does not count. If they take off, Ryan, and then skip back onto the ground a little bit later, it's that furthest point. And that's something that we see a lot on low wind days people settling back down probably not as not as realistically going to happen today with all this wind but we'll see what happens the other thing for the folks at home and the folks in the crowd you'll see the markers out there that's to help everyone judge the distances every 25 feet you see them scored off there remember from your position the angle, the parallax, may make it look different <laughs> than the score you're seeing. That's why we have judges all down the line to run and get the exact spot. So for instance, if anyone's stopping at 150 feet for me, I'm gonna be able to give that a perfect score, but it's gonna be hard for me to judge in the 25 to 50 foot range based on the angle of how I'm viewing that. That is true, and we see you got uh, some more spectators just coming in and landing. The white marks on the runway are broken down into 10 feet, which is great. Gives everybody a really good opportunity to fine tune in their own mind, hey, I think that's what this score is. And of course, our line judges will be working back and forth. It's a neat thing here today, you know. We got a great giveaway, Sporty's Pilot Shop, combining with uh, Miss Patty Wagstaff, a good friend of mine, has given a tailwheel checkout uh, course away, and you can head on over to our merchandise booth back behind us here to enter into a drawing for that. And a big, huge thanks to Sporty's for coming on board and, and supporting the Husky National Stole Series for the first time. Because stole flying, short takeoff and landing, and off airport flying, it's the fastest growing segment of general aviation. And now as we look down to our left, here comes the first of our competitors. This is our Hevering Touring and Ryan. Let's talk a little bit about these guys, gals, and airplanes. Absolutely, so here we go. We're starting off with Heavy Touring. In the lineup, this Andrew, Andrew Patry coming up in his uh, what, 1959 Cessna 182, Chris Lewis. And another 182, 182 Delta model, a couple years younger on that aircraft there. David Holderman, 
1954 Cessna 180, Don Mickey, 1953 Cessna 180, and bringing up the back of the class, Aaron Greer, 1959 Cessna 182s. These are your, we call it heavy touring, because that's what they do. They're planes that can carry a lot of load. They're also the heaviest aircraft of the competition. So what we've got here, and you look at the front and the back of this, two straight tail 182s. Both of these gentlemen are out of Ellensburg, Washington. Both started recently flying and, and competing in Stoll in the last two years. Uh, I've, we've had them at, uh, at Mayday Stoll. They usually fly cross country together. I live in the same general area, went to college in Ellensburg. So it's great to see these two really good friends and rivals, and they bring a lot to the competition. But that's not to be outdone by some of the locals. Chris Lewis here, just up the road, in uh, in Arizona as well, and he's looking to, to get on the the roster here. And then we got two of our gorgeous 180s. So this is a great example. You don't have to have great big tires. You don't have to have necessarily a tailwheel airplane. I think today's wins, we're going to see Andrew operating in about the 60 to 70 foot potential takeoff for a 182. And the 182 is a big plane, like like legitimately large aircraft. These are typically aircraft that if you're learning to fly, this might be like your second aircraft. You might level up to a second aircraft uh, into this. You typically start with a 172 or something like that. That'll be the light touring class, which will be next. Jughead will know all how to talk all about that because uh, he's competing in that class. But anyway, we're getting ready to go. And what we're going to see with Andrew, so uh, this is an, what we call an early model 182. It's got the big gear. He's running bigger tires. Of course, he's got that Macaulay propeller out front helping make uh, all the horsepower turn into thrust as well. He also runs a sportsman stoll cuff, and that puts about three feet of additional wing surface onto the wing of a Cessna aircraft, and it's all in a leading edge kit. You add that with some VGs, which are helping to keep the airflow attached over the top of that wing, and you're going to see that this airplane plane when it's light is really, really going to uh, get airborne quick. Now he's done some other things to make it light because in competition it's all about light. So he's running some titanium gear parts. Oh, it's, the, titanium is, it makes your airplane lighter in two ways. The, the components lighter and your wallet's a lot lighter, Ryan. <laughs> As he gets ready to go, I want to add to what you mentioned about the Tailwheel Checkout Course giveaway sponsored by Sporty's Pilot Shop. Uh, if you're here in the crowd today, make sure to go enter at the merchandise booth if you want to get in for that. We're going to be announcing the winner of that between the Light Sport and Light Experimental classes a little bit later today. We also want to say thanks to Sarasota Avionics and Maintenance and Garmin for some prizes for the competitors. Overall winners getting Garmin D2 smartwatches and the most consistent is going to be bringing home a Garmin InReach Mini, which is a lightweight and compact satellite communicator with GPS. Yeah. Well, and it's also important to realize what everybody, besides bragging rights, everybody's got more more great awards and prizes on the line. McFarland is giving a $300 gift certificate, uh, some clothing, some of their products for window cleaning, which with today's dust on the airplanes is going to be real important for the winners Gotta to take home. That. And a little uh, McFarland mug to drink their victory uh, beverage in tonight. Second place guys getting uh, some of those mugs, Cal Savers as well. More McFarland uh, clothing and we appreciate the extra McFarland cash for our second place winners as well. Also coming into this uh, this heavy touring as we look, I like this. The, the dust has kind of died down. The windsock is right to our left. Right now, Ryan, we're looking at about 10 degrees of left crosswind component. It's kind of been going back and forth between right on the nose and right left and right of the nose. And you think, well, what's the big deal if it's within 10 degrees? So a crosswind Crosswind component's not a big issue. The big issue we're going to be fighting today is the gust. I think you're going to see a much higher propensity either of guys scratching or gals, or the pilots are going to have to aim past the line and hope to get a couple of them good and not scratch on all of them because the scratch is going to be the challenge with the gusty winds. And uh, I can say in my personal training, gusty days are my uh, most humbling days. So, well, as I look over my shoulder, we've got about 500 people ready. Aaron has got the power just up, and there we are with a sub-75 for 0-3 golf. Way to go, Andrew, setting the standard early.
Andrew, of course, uh, heavy hitter in last year's season, heavy hitter and heavy touring. I didn't even know I did it. You can tell him dad. So, like that. Captain Arizona, Chris Lewis coming up in his beautiful uh, 182D from Team Alley Cat Beard here in Florence, Arizona. He's out here just for fun. He tells me, he goes, you know what? I'm pretty sure I can take last place consistently. You know, the last time someone said that, I think they took second place. Yeah, that's called the agent of a sleeper, and he's airborne at the 100-foot mark with that beautiful Razorback swept tail 182. So these heavy touring uh, aircraft, just to like get super av geek nerd about it, these are gross weights of 2,500 pounds to 3,600 pounds. With the red and white 180, Dave Holman pulls it back, pops the flaps, and at about 80 feet, he has got that beautiful airplane airborne. That is a 54 model. And right behind him, the, basically the twin to the airplane, a 53. This is Don Mickey, Uncle Harvey Shorts Flying Company. 0470, he's gonna keep it on a three-point attitude, oh, let oh. it lift off. It's a little tougher to see. And it looks like they're going to score him at about 135 feet. So two different techniques there, Ryan. It'll be interesting over the course of the competition to see which one of those can be most consistent. Andrew Patriot officially getting scored at 68 feet. That, that is, is short. I told you it was going to be. That's good. I no, told everyone's you. Everyone's super pumped about the wins today. But Aaron's going to go throw it out there. And, oh, just they are, they are sub-75 marking it. I told you, these two are tight in competition with each other. So right now, we got a 68, an 85 out of Don Mickey with his 180, and looking for Aaron Greer's score with the Hef. And that pipe-smoking bull is going to produce a score, I'm going to guess, of about 73 feet. So he's hoping for second place. We'll see uh, coming into the landings, of course. Or Aaron Greer there. We'll see what comes up on the score sheet. While they are coming around the pattern, we got Andrew Patry low and to your right, entering that uh, base to final turn. Now, with us not being able to go live with the broadcast today, it's real important that you look out there, throw your takes, and be able to follow on the other social media aspects out there. On Instagram, you'll find us at National Stole. Of course, on Facebook, it's the National Stole Series, and on TikTok, you can find National Stole as well. 72 feet is the official score in for Aaron Greer. Now, long final. We've been watching the guys practice, Ryan. It's been gusty. A lot of having to add the power. I look out here, and he's already got this 182 down on a pretty flat, about a one and a half degree glide path, which means he's going to be coming in behind the power curve, raising the nose to get the airplane as slow as possible, using power out of that 0470 to keep it flying with induced airflow. You can see the adjustments of power as he's ri you know, raising and lowering altitude with the gusts, all that variable action there. Little wing wag here and there as the gusts change the airflow as well. Lots of rudder work, lots of rudder work, and it fell out from underneath him, and that is exactly what we were talking about and worried about. He realized it as well. He doesn't even stop it, and yeah. he just rolls right on through. The bumblebee is going to clear off to the right. Now, here's what everybody else doesn't know. His competitors don't know that he just scratched. That's true. So it's such a mind game as a competitor. That's actually an advantage I have sometimes here. I don't let most people know this, but <laughs> I kind of get to watch and see what's happening and study a little bit more. Now, the disadvantage is today I'm going to go jump in somebody else's airplane. I don't know why they leave them unlocked with the keys in. I don't but know I'm why really? they do that. Okay. That's, a, that's, yeah. that's, the, uh, that's the hot tip of the day. They usually leave them unlocked with the keys in them. Here we go. Very low now, trying a different approach here. Let's see if this works for Chris. He was pretty consistent about finding the line yesterday. He's over it. Chop it. Get it on the ground. Get those flaps off. Here those Got tires. Got the tires skidding, locking it up. Gets the flaps all the way up to finally maximize the load breaking action. And we got to stop somewhere. It looks like we're going to go probably 235. Talk is it me. the best? No, but he's on the board. He's on. The, this is what I was going to ask you about. So talk to me a little bit about the strategy of the three rounds. Do you, as a competitor, have a different strategy for the first run compared to the second and third one? Yes, no, and maybe. <laughs> Ryan, I try to go out, and the first time I try to put down what I call a conservative number. 
i.e. I know where I should be able to get airborne. I'm going to wait till I know the airplane's ready to fly. I'm going to pull it, and then I'm going to aim about 10 feet past on the line. Holding oh, it Oh, that's a good one. This is going to be a leader potentially right here. Had a longer takeoff, but he gets it stopped at 149 feet right in front of us. Really nice job there with David Holderman. Add that to a 137 takeoff, and we're talking now less than 100, I'm sorry, less than 300 combined. So that is uh, right there. That's coming into our first place so far. So I'd like to try to get my first one down and make it a counter. And that lets me go out and be more aggressive on my second and third passes. Now, about 50% of the time, I do that. I follow <laughs> that game plan. Okay, I was going to ask. Believe it or not, like today, it's going to be obvious when you lift off. On a really calm day, if you time your takeoff perfect, you can't feel the airplane lift off. And it will feel like it's really long. Uh, in reality, you come back, either you hear on the radio or you come back and find out, no, that was actually a really good takeoff. It, it lifted off right when I asked it to. But it was so fine line that you couldn't feel it lift off. Today, down, it's going to be obvious when you lift off. The big question today is going to be just making sure you get past the line. Got that yoke full back for some additional aerodynamic braking there. And it looks like 151. Yeah, I'm Uncle Harvey, fly. short field flying circus, Don Mickey, beautiful job there. And that's going to be a that's going to be a taking him into first place in our heavy touring competition. But here comes the Ellensburg Green and White Machine. Aaron's good with his airplane. Feels like he has a little stable, more nice and stable. Oh, just short, just short. You look over at the line, Judge. The arms cross, but I don't think he knew that when he touched down. I mean, he obviously got on the good hard brakes, stopped at 160 feet. So, right there, like we talked about. Yeah. So going into the second run, second heat. We've got Don Mickey in first place with a combined score of 237, David Holderman 286, and Chris Lewis on the board in third place with 355. Andrew Patry again, kind of a heavy hitter here, so we'll, he's hoping to get on the board. He may upset the apple cart for everyone when he gets on the board, but he's also a little bit more aggressive. Okay, but here it is. Our two favorites are both on scratches right now. Beautiful airborne, drags the tail. He's got that Selkirk tail skid to protect him. Sub 70 foot takeoff. So that's good, but that's easy. That's the one they can reproduce. Now in his mind, he has to turn around and make sure that he puts down a good score. Because he does know that everybody else has a good score except for Aaron Greer. <laughs> right. Yeah, he watched Aaron Greer. And Aaron Greer was a surprise to me. I did not think that was going to be a scratch because it was such a stable approach compared to the rest of the runs. I think they're holding a little bit a little bit for spacing here for Chris Lewis. Patry is uh, off uh, entering into the downwind momentarily. Chris Lewis. 6-7 X-ray. Nice. Pop the flap. The There's his best takeoff of the weekend at around 145 feet. They're even going shorter than that. It was the other side. Beautiful. You know, and that's just a, a completely stock 182. They fill it up and go flying. And uh, got to love Captain Arizona. Started flying later in life at the age of 53. Here's a Robertson. I'm sorry. A uh, sportsman equipped 180 with the Stoles and VGs. That was a nice takeoff. Now you notice he used the technique where he picked up the tail, popped the flaps, and lowered the tail at the same time. Don prefers to keep in the three-point attitude. We'll see what he does with today's second pass. Beautiful polished airplane with just the red race accents. There the tail's up, pop, oh! There we just go. So you know that you have timed it perfect on a tail dragger. If when the tail hits the ground, the flaps hit full extension and it all becomes airborne at once, that is the perfect timing. But there's no airspeed, there's no instruments to tell you where that is, Ryan. It is all feeling and seat of the pants. Talking to a lot of the competitors. There we go. Oh, oh. popping off the ground. Setting there. the bar. The half is jumping. Looked uh, a lot more like a buck and bowl there, the way that thing got off the ground. I was talking to a couple folks from the, the Bush class we're going to see a little bit later today, and a lot of them sing a song. 
sing a song in their head before they yank the stick back? Are you a song singer? In I'm not a song singer, but I'll, I'll flow through stuff even more so with my landings because the landings are a combination of ripping the throttle off, pressing the brakes, and throwing the flaps off all at once. And it depends. If you think you're high, then it might be the flaps off and then the power. Uh, so it definitely gets busy. But yeah, some chair flying or practicing visual mentalization is going to be very important and that's exactly what Andrew needs to be doing right here because he needs to make this line. Again he's always on the edge you can see the wings kind of wagging back and forth as he flies it just kind of on the the edge of the angle of attack there. He's got to hold it off. Though. That one's going to make the line. All right, So, we made so the he's line. got a counter up on the brakes hard is all he can. 130 and six inches. And <laughs> six inches. I wanted to ask you another thing because you compete in this sport and I just uh, look longingly at it. Today is unusual because we are on a hard surface. Is that weighing in any way? I mean, certainly the nose gear guys, they can lock it up. Uh, everyone's got a lot more traction. Burning through some rubber, maybe uh, sponsored by Goodyear. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but how does that change your approach as well? Because typically we're on grass. Uh, today, obviously, we're on hard surface uh, as opposed to like the, the sand. Well, uh, I would say probably at least half of our competitions are on pavement. Is it harder on the tires? Yes, it is, especially those wonderful Alaska bush wheels. They, they're great for rolling over rocks and sand and everything else, but the pavement's hard on them. It's just a little bit of the cost of doing the competition. Um, but we practice, practice, practice landing, even with the tailwheel airplanes, with the brakes on. Some people will even have them set all the way to a, a locked position. Captain Arizona floating well past the line on that one, but he had a good one in the book, so that's okay. He's going to take this one down to the 300-foot mark. He, it won't really matter for him. He's not even going to stop it. He's just going to roll it clear. But that's okay because he's got a good one in the books. It's a beautiful, a beautiful landing. But yeah. Sometimes the most beautiful ones aren't the shortest. So, and Andrew uh, did get a combined score. Let's see that first round. Now he is up to 189. Yes, for round two. So Andrew Patry has taken the Bumblebee into the lead. So uh, the uh, judges booth chimed in. One of the things that folks are competing for today, as well as the class victory, is a most consistent score. We take all their scores, we see who is the most consistent. So when a competitor kind of gives up and rolls out, they're also taking themselves out of that. Nice job there. He got a really big gust of wind. You saw the airplane raise 10 feet up, and he has stopped at the 100 foot mark. It's a little bit of luck here, and. David just won at the casino because the wind picked up when he was on final and instead of dropping out from underneath him, it gave him more lift. That reduced his ground speed. He floated up. He saw the line. He kept it under control and got it in. Landed about 10, 15 feet past the line and still stopped in a wonderful short. What are they showing him? 103 feet. So right now he's leading with the overall landing and that moves him into second at 199 with that run. Nipping at the heels of Andrew Patriot with one, you know, 10 feet shorter than him. While we've got uh, aircraft on a uh, short final here, got to talk about our headline sponsor, Husky. Aviat Aircraft Husky. Huskies wear luxury aircraft and backcountry meat. Many manufacturers claim to have a large mission profile, but only Husky delivers. You can meet America's favorite tail dragger. The Aviat Husky is faster, stronger, and more. That was perfect, Ryan, because Don is in the flare right now. He's fighting those gusts. There's a little lift. There's pull the power. Oh, and I think that one's going to end up two feet short, and that is so bad. Um, and he does realize that you saw the kind of the head bob up there yeah. and the shoulder shrug, and he knew that one was short, which is just too bad. Oh. All right, so back to Aaron. Can he, uh, can he put one on here that counts? Now, one of the things, especially in today's windy environment, a lot of the stole competitors like having manual flaps, Ryan, and that's because it's instant on, instant off, or nearly instant, compared to the electric versions. Today, this is definitely a case, like right there, the Ooh. flaps are already off. Great job. Let them roll just a hair, just a hair. Oh! Oh, I don't oh, know if he, he ever gave it a stop. He never completely stopped it. He needed to. I did not see or hear whether that was a, yeah, we got some a scratch or there. not.
Oh, and that was Ryan. That is two out of three that he has scratched now. So really the pressure is on Aaron and it's self-induced pressure. And that's what's fun about the competition. You know, I, I fly into sandbars and I teach off airport and stole flying. And when I talk to people, it's like competing is a totally different thing. You got to have the flying skills, but then you also have to have the, the mental awareness. Yep. It's different. It's just different when you're out here competing. And it's different if you're just here competing against yourself, trying to make yourself a better pilot. And that's what I always encourage anybody to do is come out here and try for the first time. Compete against yourself. Wow. Whoa. Andrew just nailed it. That is his best takeoff for sure for Mr. Patriot. Let's see what comes up on the scores there. Previous takeoffs for him, 68 feet, first one, 57. Oh, yeah. 53. Right. 53, 53 feet. out of a 182. But I know Aaron is not here to compete against himself. He is here to take home the trophy to Ellensburg, and he now has put a lot of pressure on himself. Here's Christopher Lewis rolling in that blue, oh. red, and white 182. So if you notice there, his tail was about six inches off the ground when that airplane lifted off. What that tells me is he could have increased the angle of attack with some back yoke and gotten that airplane airborne sooner. Just fighting, my, just fighting my papers over here. Fighting the papers. Jughead, it's yeah. windy, guys. It's windy. Yeah, I'm gonna get it. Yeah, you got the water bottle yeah, over there. there if you need it. Look at that. Oh yeah, that was it. Keep it airborne. Keep it airborne. Working it. Yeah. David's like, I want a spot on that podium, and right now he is flying like he is gonna get himself there. He's gonna earn it. Don Mickey on the line. Full throttle. Oh, good! Just hovering up. And folks, these are the, the heaviest airplanes of the day today. We're gonna see some even more impressive uh, distances as things continue. Wow, this is this is getting. I don't like seeing this dust blowing across the ground. It is definitely picking up, and and uh, hopefully we stay in the self safe realm because it is getting uh, it is getting to blow here pretty darn good. There's Aaron rear off again. His takeoffs very consistent in the 72 and 71 foot range leading up to this point. But he's also had two scratches, so he's not on the board yet. That is true. You know, we got a new. Uh, we got a new sponsor here with the National yeah. Stoll Series this year, Duck Propellers. I hope I'm pronouncing that Duke. right. Our Duke, thank Duke. you. And uh, welcome as a 2022 sponsor. So from uh, from their bosses, uh, they said, hey, we are beyond excited to team up with National Stoll, promote the highly competitive short takeoff and landing events. They look forward to working and meeting with all the proponents components out there. And uh, been building propellers and rotors since 1997. Duke Propellers, welcome aboard and thanks for being a part of this great, uh, great event. And it's great to have Sporty's Pilot Shop here. I mean, I remember as a young kid when my dad was flying and, and getting the Sporty's yeah. catalogs back then. And then I started flying and buying stuff through Sporty's. So it... Uh, An aviation institution, to say the least. Absolutely. You know, and I've got several friends that work with them and have, have uh, developed courses and done courseware. And, and it's just great to see them out here now jumping on board with the Stoll events. Okay, he's on the podium right now. Can he better his position? Andrew Patrie, he's going to be on the line. That looks good. Heavy By upper. inches. They're calling that good by inches, and this may be his best overall. Oh, my gosh. 53-foot takeoff. It's going to be somewhere around 80. Come on. Come on. Let's put up that score. He's like, I want to take home the trophy from my buddy. 88. Andrew Patriot, 53 and an 88 for a combined of quick math and public, Ryan. This is where you come in. 141. 141. Thanks, thanks Excel spreadsheets. All right. <laughs> there you go. That's going to be hard to beat. So the only person who can really even, with based on the current scores, Aaron Greer, only person who can catch up to him realistically, but Aaron keeps scratching. Well, I wouldn't count out in either of those 180s. That's true. You, you get them down on the line. Get those flaps dumped. Bit oh, of a float Arizona there. got a big, big lift there. Um, he's going to get her stopped all the way at about 275. So I was just trying to pull up the weather. So Dave and Don both have 
good rounds in the books. So Absolutely. they can be a little more aggressive on this. I was just going to say, uh, no weather station here at Summerton, but we do have uh, Yuma Marine Corps Air Station nearby. 23 minutes ago, they were reporting 15 knots. Yeah, we're downwind from the Marines. It's blowing a little bit stronger here. Say, but speaking of Marines, we've got a whole group of about 20 of the Marine Corps' finest air traffic controllers. They're down here helping out and... Uh, Supporting National Stoll. They've been volunteering all weekend. You see them out on the line judging and setting up cones and everything else. Let's see if David can keep it going. Oh, Hold it up. oh, oh no. no! Just short. Just short. And in and case you're wondering, the bounce doesn't help. No, you can <laughs> see he was fighting everything he had in there. Big gust of wind on short final. That one was short. But he finds himself sitting in... Uh, Right now, looks like second place at 199. So, so again, they based on the previous scores. We'll see what Don Mickey can do. Don Mickey, a fierce competitor. Also, uh, Gainesville very famously had a, I think it was a pigeon, land on his aircraft to his taxing by, just riding along. Thought that was going to end worse than it did. I, I remember that, amongst <laughs> uh, a few other things at Gainesville. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it's been so fun. You know, Ryan and I, um, I don't know, we, we back each other up. When I can't make it, he's always been the man right? to be here. When he couldn't make it, I've been here, and we've been hoping and hoping that we could sit here and bring this show to you together, and we finally get we to finally do it. We finally get to do it. It's my, yes. it's my dream come true because so. you're a bit, I mean, I don't know. I'll maybe talk about it more when you're flying. A little bit of a legend sitting next to me here <laughs> in, the, in the aviation oh. community. You're too kind. Either that or you're drunk already. I don't know. Well, I get All right, here early. we go. One last. Don oh, look at that float, big, big gust of wind. Big gust of wind. But beautifully recovered. I mean, yeah. basically hovering a 180 down yeah. onto the ground there. Only thing he could have done to help that really is start taking the flaps off. But he was fairly high. He was four or five feet up. And so uh, in these winds, again, you're just like, just fly the airplane. Keep it safe. Get it on the ground. He's got some good scores in the book already. And now let's see if Aaron can get one past the line. So potentially for the upset. If I have seen guys in this bracket or in this competition do a triple scratch. Okay. He doesn't. He gets it on there. He's like, I want my Maybe spot on the, on the top podium. Is it going to be enough? Looks we got like a 63-foot takeoff. And we're going to add in a landing of... I'm going to guess oh. 100 feet. 101 for 164. And that gives our heavy touring class first place finish to Andrew Patry in his 59 straight tail 182 out of Ellensburg, Washington. 141 is the score. Second place coming in at his buddy 164, Aaron Greer, as we just saw, and 199, the 180, David Holderman. David Holderman in that 180. Santa Clara. So, the nose draggers kind of dominated there. This is an interesting thing. We hear it every competition. There's always that thing around the campfire, like who's the who's better suited? Is it the nose draggers versus the tail draggers? And I think, honestly, my observation has been it's a horse apiece. I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> uh, well, now we're getting into what a lot of times is our most competitive bracket. This is the light touring. So this is our 170s, 172s, 175s. We've got a Pacer in here. We've got a Cessna 150. You'll see a lot of the malls competing in this category as well. So as they get taxing down, we're going to turn it over to the promoters and we're going to pay some more bills. But Ryan, the heavy touring was something to see. A lot of dust, a lot of short, short takeoffs and landings. That's just, that's just the beginning.
downtown group up. I have 10-4. Yeah, I'm sure, dog. Good, little driver, straight on through. And we are back, everybody, getting ready for light touring here at the Husky National Stole Outlaw Stole Competition in beautiful, windy Summerton, Arizona. We are getting so much dust flying through the air right now. I am kind of liking it because it's, it's a little exciting right now. We're headed into the light touring class for the AvGeek nerds at home. These are the 2301 to 2499 pound aircraft. These are the ones that if you go and do your pilot training, there's a good chance you're gonna fly one of these. This is also where we're gonna see some super tight competition here because we've got Clayton Stansel with a 180 horse 172 that's been converted to a tail dragger. And then Gary Stanhart here is with a beautiful 170 that's also 180 horse out of uh, Kia, Arizona. Jeff Pohl, the dirty bird, the man himself, probably one of our top two favorites going in, has a, another 180 horse 170. Wait, are you the other of the top two favorites? Uh, no, I would not say I'm the other one of the top two favorites. <laughs> That'd be Micah Lindstrom and his 170. And that, that's an airplane that Jeff Pohl built and sold to him and then taught him how to fly it too well. Dustin Mosier here, the 120, which it was amazing watching him fly that thing yesterday. And then I'll uh, jump into Dirty Bird with uh, and give my chances at it, see if I can t fly as well as I talk. And we got a 150, which was just amazing to watch Miss Joanna Justice fly it yesterday. I just, I mean, classic airplane, nothing special about it, but just watered her eyes flying it. Here we go, Clayton, 180 horse, VGs, Madras Super Tips, pops the flap, about 110 feet. Now I know that was his conservative takeoff. He really didn't get the tail up very far. Of course, that 172 he talks about, it's just not as light on the tail as the 180s. And so it cost him a little bit on his takeoffs, he figures. He comes down out of Mid Valley Air Park in uh, New Mexico. So one of the local boys. After that is Gary Standhart, Cessna, 18, Cessna 170 Bravo, uh, based out of a uh, Wick Wickenburg. Yeah, he's definitely a local guy here. Again, uh, Sportsman Stole Kit, the MT prop on here. Picks up that tail, drops it, lowers the flaps at the same time, about 100 foot as well. So that's a pretty good effort there. This aircraft has 175 wings. What that does is gives him a little extra fuel. Doesn't really help him today because he doesn't need it. And of course, running Alaska Bush wheels, 180 gear, and the double puck brakes. Now this man started Malacca. He went up for his very first competition ever in Valdez Stoll and put himself on the podium. He's won several competitions and now you see why. There's the Dirty Bird Airborne, nice and early. That's a good airplane. It's light, it's powerful, and that Voyager prop absolutely rocks. That's our uh, first heat for uh, light touring here. And Jeff Pohl, man, with that aggressive tail up maneuver. Love watching him every time. While we're, uh, while we're waiting for him to come around, I want to give a thanks to Somerton Airport. So uh, Somerton Airport, the folks here say 1945 marked the end of World War II and also the start of Somerton Airport. With the vision of the late Charles Saltzer, this airport has grown and seen flight training, crop dusters, music videos, skydiving records, and maybe today, a short landing record. So thanks to the folks at Somerton Airport for helping us get that all together. Also, big thanks to the folks just up the road, Fly Yuma International Airport. Really appreciate their help bringing this together. Proud community supporter of our event. Well, it's funny that you tie them together because the first time I ever came to Summerton, I brought my 170 out here. Uh, that was back when I was pretty new to flying it. It was a big deal just to land on the gravel runway. And the reason I was here, it was my Patriot Jet teams. We were up at Yuma International flying at the air show at Yuma Marine Corps Air Station. There you so go. it was really cool to get to come home. All right, Clayton, bring that in, the 175 tail dragger. He is good on the line. This is going to be a nice competitive score to get him started right around the 200-foot range. 106 takeoff, about a 101 landing. He's got to like that. I don't think it's going to be a winning score, 
but it's definitely going to be a good one to get started. And now he can go. Oh, they showed that as a scratch. Oh, it did show up as a DQ on the wow. score. I didn't think it was. A, did you guys in the crowd think that was a DQ? Yeah. Okay, they're going to replay They are now. going to replay. And, yes, we actually have cameras on the line and replay capability with judges to, uh, to look at that. All right. Here's where this wind's working now. Gary Standhart coming in. Working it hard. Look at that rudder. Look at that rudder working. Keeping Big burst off. of power. Now he's just like, just keep it flying. Okay, now we'll go worry about there landing again. Oh, and he got it on there. Look at this, 110. That was a good... No, I just saw another set of X's on the hand. Another DQ on that. Look at that beautiful 170, though. Love oh, that thing is it. gorgeous. That thing is gorgeous. He was actually hoping to get it up in my country, up in uh, Snohomish, Washington. We were going to go play on the sandbars together last year, and that stupid uh, COVID interfered with all our playing plans. Get so hopefully he can everything. make it next time. All right, so we got two scratches for the light touring class to kick it off. Here comes Jeff Pohl, and, and once he lands... <laughs> Need to put these here just for me? I think those me? are for us. You get one and I get the other. Which one do you want? All right, perfect. All right, I'm going to take the watch. You're going to take the yeah, uh, in reach. Yeah. I, I don't like to know what time it is, but I don't like to know where I'm at. Ooh. There, Dirty oh. Bird is up and good. That is in the 55 foot range. I don't know. I think I saw a judge throw an X, X. up again. Let's see. Let's see. Another oh, scratch. Oh. Every run, first run, or every competitor for the first run of light touring. Again, uh, super challenging conditions because these gusts, right? Like it's that one looked so good. It looked right on the line from here. It looked absolutely oh. on the line. And and I will say, when you hit the line, when you get a perfect landing, you don't know if it was good. That's that's in the airplane. You can't see it. You can't right. tell. You go, I think it was good, and then you look over your shoulder and to get the deal. No, what we're looking at here is we're looking at uh, some great prizes from Garmin and... Sarasota Avionics, I think. Exactly. Sarasota Avionics came on board to provide these for uh, our most consistent and our overall grand prize winner. So a Garmin InReach Mini and the, and the Garmin, Garmin D2Y. D2Y. There's a good nice. effort out of Clayton. Looks like well, they're going to count that up in the 74-foot range. So an improvement over his first. And that's what's important, too, is try to improve on each takeoff. Got to know him a little bit at Gainesville last year. Uh, kind of a humble guy, but wanted to make sure I was getting the specs right. I wanted to make sure I was getting the specs right on the aircraft. I think we had the wrong year down. He's like, I'll have you know. It's a 1956. All right. As the prop cycles there, trying to harness all the horsepower out of that 0360 Lycoming. Stan gets it airborne, and we're going to lift that one off at better than his first, I think. Big improvement for Stan. 101, so that's actually a, a decrease there. They kind of swap places. Now, Dirty Bird rocked it on the takeoff, but he knows he's got to put one together on the land. But remember, it's the best on the same pass. So that great 60-foot takeoff he had doesn't matter. Doesn't matter really at all. Im really impressed there to watch Jeff. I, f I don't know if you felt it too. Right when he was getting airborne, we, we had a, a lapse in airflow. The gust died down, and there was no, no impact on his performance at all right there. Let's talk a little bit about rugged radios. <laughs> Jeff we around. need them today. Look at the dust blowing oh, around. Man, Everything like, we got here is just covered in dust. And Well, it's funny because those rugged radios, they kind of started in the racing industry, and I think that's why we got them here is these environments. Right? We need something extra. Yeah, we need something rugged radio. <laughs> rugged, like a rugged radio. They specialize in aviation communication as well. Uh, their aviation headsets offer comfort and noise canceling performance at an affordable price. You can choose from passive noise reduction, active noise canceling headset options for uncompromised uncom comfort. Check out Rugged Radios. They're the official communications partner of the Husky National Stole Series. All right, as Clayton comes in on final here, he's trying to put one in the books, and that is not going to do it. Another scratch. 
Just want to point out our friends at the airport are uh, watering down the, the dirt on the back end. So we've got a, a nice firm taxi and uh, less dust in the taxi area for competitors. Thanks to them for that. And thanks to all of you in the crowd, the dust and the wind. You guys are hardcore. Give yourself a round of applause, guys. That's so awesome. They're just like, no, nah, we're not applauding. <laughs> we're not applauding. We're here to talk airplanes. A little bit higher on approach this time around for Gary Stanhart. But you notice right there, he went from about a three and a half, four degree glide path all the way down here to a one. He lost all the lift up there. It fell out from underneath him. Had to throw a bunch of power in it. This one is good. This is a counter. Put him on the board at 85, 90 feet. I bet it's going to be about 91. So he made nice adjustments to that dirty air coming down. Those big Alaska bush wheels absorbing the impact, double puck brakes helping to get it stopped. And here we are with a combined score. Are you on the right page? You're trying to make me confused oh, here. No, I'm in the right page. I got a little messed up. Technical support here. Okay, we've got Gary Stancil 192. And Standhart 192 for his lowest score. All right, Dirty Bird, get it past the line, buddy. There it is. It's past the line, up and stop. Not as long or as short as he would like, but still going to be competitive with his takeoff. That should move him into first place with probably a combined of about 185 feet we're hoping for. And we noticed that there was an error there that Clayton did have a scratch on that second run as well. So Look at that, 141 combined for the Dirty Bird and Jeff Pohl right now. So that is where we are with as we go into the final round of the light touring. Uh, first heat of light touring, you still got to get out there. and Well, uh, the first heat, that's exactly right. You got to go right. mess around a little bit. So. Okay, now Clayton's up to the line here again in that beautiful uh, 172 been converted there he's uh he's got to get one on the board this time or he's he's going to be a triple dq nice it sounded like his propeller was doing a lot better job harnessing the uh, the horsepower off that engine that time i think maybe the wind's helping just a little bit as well as he was maximizing the rpm he went with a little different technique though, Ryan. He never did pick up the tail. He just kind of let it fly off in a three-point attitude a little bit more. Okay, so here's Gary Standhart. Gary's got to be happy. I know he's happy with what he put down earlier. Now let's just see if he can improve it. Could have had that airplane airborne just a hair earlier, but it's super tough to tell. You're official now, Mr. I know, Dombrowski. I got some credentials, but, yeah. but she was making fun of me because they spelled my name, my last name wrong on it. That's not important right now. <laughs> Here's All Jeff right. Cole. It's Dirty Bird. The founder of Sodbuster Stole, at Minnesota Airborne. Oh. That's a good one. Off to the races for Dirty Bird. Jeff's a just a fierce competitor I've as I've gotten to know him over the last year's season just like so aggressive but also like just a really genuine nice guy oh such a nice guy I mean he's lending me his, his keys to his airplane we've done that before I've been back and and uh helped him out at his event at National Stoll it uh this year it was in in uh, Brainerd it's been in Malacca it's been in Brainerd now this year Sodbuster Stoll is going to be the weekend before Oshkosh I don't remember the exact name of the town it's to you. Hartford Wisconsin this year Hartford Wisconsin which is uh, where the the cup great cup migration has happened a couple times it's okay like where I learned to fly Hartford, so nice Wisconsin. and close for everybody headed back Absolutely. to Oshkosh come back to the Stoll event uh, you can leave your airplane there run around for a week and through the mid uh, Midwest, enjoy the everything that Minnesota and Wisconsin has to offer in the summer, and then go to Oshkosh. Yeah, Hartford Sounds Airport. like a good plan. Beautiful, beautiful turf runway there. It's where the Cub oh. Club's based, so it's it's a great place to hold stole competition. Uh, going to be a little bit of a homecoming for me. Well, cool, cool. You know, AirTech, they got some great coatings, whether you got a fabric-covered airplane or uh, traditional aluminum. 
I love their product. Their paint, it uh, it looks great. It holds up great. AirTech Coatings, they make paint fly, and they have been a big supporter of National Stoll since day one. Speaking of day one, there it is. He finally puts one in the books. Good job, Clayton. Gets it stopped. What are we going to call that, 135? I think 135 feels about right. We'll see what they say. Official judge. Now, as they finish here, Jeff Pohl's going to taxi to the right. Ryan, I'm going to leave it all to you. All right. I, I need to uh, kind of shift gears here now, take the tuxedo jacket off, and uh, go get ready to go fly my heat. You don't fly so, that? Um, yeah, it doesn't fit on the seat quite as well. <laughs> That's fair. But, uh, <laughs> But let's let's hope I can go and, and do justice for at least the uh, the broadcast team. Yeah, I, I'll be rooting for you. All righty, hundred percent. We're gonna watch these last two, and then as soon as the dirty bird touches down, I'm over. I was gonna say you can't get in it yet. It's short final. Whoa, no, there we Woo! go. Get it straight. Good. Out. That's a great example right there. As he just takes it around. Of course, safety is always our number one concern. And there's just times that you know what, you're not gonna land at a zone. It doesn't. I mean, I go around on my airline 737 at times. And every landing is a go around until you prove otherwise. Great decision on his part. If he wanted to, he could have actually kept it airborne, come back in, and been allowed another landing attempt. Yeah. But he decided just to take it on in. Definitely don't want to penalize anybody for making the safe decision. You can always go around. You want to make sure everyone's safe. It makes things a little harder for us with all our sheets of paper up here. But we're happy to have people do that. Okay. First heat of light touring coming to a close here with Jeff Pohl just hovering it in. Dirty bird. That looks good. Dumped the flaps, pinned it on the ground. A little bit past the line, but he will take it. We will see everybody awesome. later. Jughead's off to go fly. Wish me right. luck. Have a great flight, Jughead. It's going to be great. So, okay, let's see as the scores come in here. Looks like Jughead's got his work cut out for him. Jeff Pohl with a combined score of 115. Gary Standhart, combined score of 192. And Clayton Stansel, finally on the board after those first two scratches with a combined score of 232. Again, this class, I, I'm i a little torn. I love the Cub classes. I love the... Uh, the Bush class, because I grew up on Piper Cubs, but uh, this one really near and dear to my heart because it's a really accessible class. Anybody can access it. It's the kind of airplane that you would fly. Most people would fly in training. You could come out, compete National Stoll after you get your certificate. When it's time to recover and paint your fabric-covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA-approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy-to-apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps okay, than any folks, other product on the market the today, here, saving you both time and money. If you have money. an aviation radio, you... please be very careful. We need that turned off. We had someone uh, keying on the competition frequency just now, interfering with the communications between our air boss and the pilot. So again, for safety, please be very mindful of that. If you have an aviation radio in the crowd, we want to want that off it's so that we aren't, technology, uh, aren't interfering we offer with a wide range of products. Safety. Whether it's for work, play, antique, or aerobatic, we have you covered. Remember, we make paint fly. I got that right turn, we're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. I turn four. Oh, that's a good one, dude. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good, little driver, straight on through. 
Again, everyone, welcome back to Husky National Stole Series Outlaw Stole in what's proving to be a gusty and dusty day at Summerton Airport. Uh, I was a poet and I didn't even know it. We are in the middle of the light touring class here today. And uh, as we get set and everyone's getting set, I want to just call out something. Uh, some new news coming out today. The Husky National Stole Series is announcing the full 2022 season calendar. We've got three new events added to the schedule. So first stop this year, of course, is where we're at right now. And then we're headed to a bunch of other events. We will see you at Swamp Stole in Jennings. That's one that you're used to. We're going to be headed to Sun and Fun. Come visit us there. SoCal Stole over in California. Then the Stearman Field Fly-In. Vented Kansas Sodbusters stole competition in Hartford, Wisconsin. You heard us just waxing poetic about Hartford a minute ago. And Georgia stole new on the list. Noon in Georgia. And then wrapping it up, Lone Star stole in October. Lone Star stole and the Husky National stole season championships in Gainesville, Texas. So, folks, all the competitors all over the country that come around and watch this, we hope that you join us too. Maybe it'll be me, maybe it'll be Jughead, maybe it'll be someone else. We'll all be on the mic trying to help bring this to your homes, to your ears. Super exciting stuff. Okay, let's recap the standings as we get off to the races. Check out Dustin Mosher in the Cessna 172. He's a local boy from California. We'll call it local enough. Cessna 120, very different airplane, a lot earlier than ones you may have seen competing today. Right after him, Micah Lindstrom in a Cessna 170 Bravo model flew all the way from Minnesota. Pulling up to the line now. We've got a Piper Pacer. Love me some short wing Pipers. Raider Johnson from Cedar City, Utah in that 1954 Piper Pacer. Joanna Justice coming up in a Cessna 150 Golf model from Arkansas. Gotta love to see a 150. What a beautiful example of one right in front of you there. Again, if you're gonna do some pilot training, you're gonna see a 150. And then my colleague on the mic, John Jughead Council, taking the controls of Dirty Bird. That's a lot of trust for Jeff Pohl. It's a lot of trust to let, let someone else fly your plane. Jughead's off to the races heavy on the throttle, tails up. That's an impressive one. He was humble before, but I think he's gonna give everyone a run for their money. Bring up the wind conditions. No new, no new Mitars out of Yuma yet. They're still so showing 15 knots, <coughs> and maybe that's a lot of it's a lot of knots for dust to be going into my mouth. Hope you guys in the crowd are all doing okay as well. Want to talk about one of our sponsors, Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance. If you're talking, if you're looking for aviation insurance, you should look no further than Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance. They've got an extensive team of professional aviators, and they will give you the attention you deserve and build a relationship with an agent that you can trust. Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance is aviation protected. Also wanna give a little shout out to Morris Ag Air, another sponsor that's supporting us today. Gotta love some ag flying. It's real, you wanna talk about people who are doing uh, hardcore flying, hardcore landing, keeping everything pulled together. That would be Morris Ag Air. Hey, look who just sat down next to me. You're gonna break it? Don't break it. Colin Caneva's on the mic now. Welcome, welcome. Uh, 
Here comes Dustin in that 120. I'm gonna guess about 150 feet. And then high and to your right, you're gonna see Micah Lindstrom in a 170 Bravo. Again, that silver with the black nose. Micah started flying with his grandfather on 2009 and he trained in a Cessna 175. Big modifications to his 170 are sportsman cuffs, VGs, and he's got an 83 inch MT propeller. Woo! I heard the crowd. Yeah, they're calling it a scratch. Line judge is calling that a scratch for Micah. Raider Johnson up next. Coming in in that Piper Pacer. Love me that Piper Pacer. It's a 1954 model. He's from Cedar City, Utah. Fixed wing private pilot in 2017. And he learned how to fly in that aircraft. So he's got a lot of stick time in that airplane. He's now a rotary wing CFII for Southern Utah University. He's got a climb prop on that, VGs on the wings, and Stewart tips holding it off. Good landing. Got to keep that stick back, keep that tail down. Sometimes with the tail draggers, we have a little bit of a concern about keeping that tail down when it's less windy. Today, I think it's going to be uh, less of an issue. Joanna Justice now in the Cessna 150. Got those brakes locked up, those tires squealing. I'm going to guess that's somewhere around one between 175, 180. And for this second heat so far, we have Dustin Mosher with 434 in the 120. Michael Lindstrom with a DQ. Raider Johnson with 340. And Joanna Justice, 301, bringing up the heat. Just was talking to the judges back in the camper behind me, and they mentioned that uh, Dustin may be in the wrong class. That Cessna 120, if it's under 100 horsepower and has no flaps, it would be better suited for the light sport class. So there'll be a discussion there. Maybe we'll move his scores over there. Here's Jughead nursing it down. Jughead just decided to stop right in front of me to wave hello. <laughs> Can't tell if he's happy with that one or not, but again, you heard him say before he likes to be more conservative with the first run. Jughead, by the way, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel John Council uh, flew over 5,000 hours in the F-15. Speaking with that 120, here's Dustin Mosher again in the Cessna 120, race 28. Getting it off, I'm gonna call it somewhere around, I don't know, between 225 and 250. Super accurate judging from the booth here. Here comes Micah from Minnesota. Whoa! Okay, so here's the thing with Micah. Micah is another one to watch today. He did have a DQ on that first run, but from what I heard from Jughead, he trains with Jeff Pohl, and Jughead said Jeff taught him how to fly it too well. Okay, the Piper Pacer with Raider Johnson at the controls. Again, he's from Cedar City, Utah, off the ground. Judges running to find, we're gonna call that probably a 176. 
on the takeoff. Joanna Justice in the 150 off on the roll. What a beautiful 150. Love that paint job on it. Little bit of a sink there, but she got it under control and she's off into the wild blue yonder. And that leaves Jughead for run number two, getting ready to take off. Off the ground, sub 75 for Jughead. We'll have to see how that nets out. Okay, here's the thing. Let's take a look at the standings after the first run. Jughead's first run lowest was 194. Jeff Pohl still holding on to first place with 115. Gary Standhart, second place, 192. So it is competitive right now in the light touring class. Only two feet <laughs> separating them. I'm I'm betting on my buddy Jughead to uh, to pop a couple feet forward there. Winds feel like they're picking up right now. Feels like the dust is calming down. Well, maybe it just all finally all blew away. Dustin Mosher high and to the right for you in the crowd right now, bringing that 120. And you can see he's uh, really kind of hovering it off. A little bit of a slip action happening right now to get it down. A little more slip in love. Nothing like a good slip. Get it set. He didn't stop it. So again, we want our competitors to stop the aircraft to get a score, even if they don't like it, because that keeps them keeps them in the books for most consistent. And I did just hear my in my ears that I missed that it was a scratch, so that's probably why he didn't stop it. And a scratch for everyone also takes you out of the running for the most consistent score, so that may be why when you scratch, you know you're out of the books for that as well. Micah Lindstrom, okay. Micah Lindstrom with a 67-foot takeoff. Let's see what he brings into the table. What does that even mean, brings into the table? Let's see what he brings forth for us right now. Holding it off. Little goose of throttle, a little bit of bounce. Get it stopped, Micah. There we go. So sub-125. Going to have to really work to get it closer to where Jeff Pohl's at. Jeff Pohl's landings were all between 51 and 78 feet with his best combined score again of 115. Micah is on the board now. 179, there's the brakes of the pacer locking up. Found out through some other aviation friends that I have. I've got some friends that race F1 at Reno in the little cassettes. And uh, some of them credit their ability to fly that little short coupled cassette with time in the Piper Pacer. Okay, here comes Joanna in the 150. Dropping it in. Maybe right around 200 feet there for Joanna. And that leaves Jughead for run two, getting ready to come up in that 170 Dirty Bird. Look at how stable that is right now. I'm not just being nice because he's my co-announcer today, but look at how stable he's got that right now. Might be that, uh, that airline pilot, currently a first officer for Alaska Airlines. Air... 
Oh, he's a captain now. See, it says in his bio right here, he's first officer. He must have to update the bio. He's a captain now as of last month, I'm hearing. That's amazing. Congratulations to Jughead for that. And whoa, did he get it down short there? Fifty-seven foot takeoff. Previous landing was 139. Guess what, folks? Pre this landing, 79 feet. So he's at 136, which puts him firmly in second place behind Jeff Pohl's 115. And we're on to the third and final run of light touring here at Outlaw Stoll. There goes that 120 again. We may be moving those scores over to the light sport class. That's all right. He just wanted to play with the uh, the bigger planes. Here comes Micah now. Micah getting ready to take off. Had a really, really competitive first run, but with the DQ, it didn't count. He has a conservative on the board with 179. We'll see what he can do this time. And Raiders getting the, putting the coals in on the pacer. And the 150 of Joanna Justice. Off to the races. Whoa, nice and short takeoff there. Settling down, but she's got it under control. That saddle is something that we see a lot in stoll competitions. You get it up, and it, it starts to settle down while you uh, you have to grab a little more airspeed to stay airborne. It's all about keeping the nose down there to get that speed. Here's Jughead. Oh, man, he's not messing around. That's sub 50 feet is what they're saying. Seven foot takeoff in a Cessna 170 for John Jughead Council. That's the best takeoff of light touring today. Just a few feet shorter than Jeff Pohl, Pohl's 53 feet. So now things get really interesting. Can he make it up on the back end with the landing? Here we go. We're getting ready to wrap it up for light touring for Outlaw Stoll. First, we'll have Dustin in that 120. Kind of a medium height and to your right there, folks, as he brings it in. Feel the wind, pretty variable still right now. And I wish we had a camera inside the cockpit for these folks. You'd see those, control, the yokes in particular for all these Cessnas just moving around pretty crazy. It looks like it's good. He's got to get it stopped. I'm going to call that 149, I bet. I bet that's what they're going to say, 149. Next is Michael Lindstrom again with that 1955 Cessna 170 Bravo from Minnesota. Says he found his dream airplane in this 170. As Soon as he saw it, he knew it was the right airplane for him. He's been flying it for a year and a half. He's now 22 years old and has roughly 700 hours with the majority of that 700 hours of flying time, tailwheel flying. See what Micah can do, just holding it off. Love that beautiful, polished airframe. Glints from the sun right now. Oh, oh, we're gonna call that a scratch for Micah. That put Micah's, Micah's best run then in at 179. 
which all but seals it for Jeff and Jughead. We'll see what Jughead can do when he comes around since he's got that couple foot shorter takeoff than Jeff. Raider Johnson in the Piper Pacer up next. A little bit of a gust there, got to respond to that. And they're calling it a scratch for Raiders' last run. So his best then in the Piper Pacer combined score of 340 feet. Up next, Joanna Justice. That's a good name, that's like a superhero name, right? Fighting crime in the Cessna 150, <laughs> Joanna Justice in the 150 golf model. Black and white, plain, so beautiful and shiny. Here it comes. They're saying it's good. Beautiful landing. I heard some, some cheering in the crowd there and she stopped. Definitely sub 150. That might be her best, her best performance today. Oh, for sure. Yeah, her takeoff was massively improved. At 86 feet, that was a, a, over a 40-foot jump for her there. And then 142 feet, so a little bit longer on that landing than her others. Combined score of 228 for Joanna. And now, Jeff Poles probably holding his breath back there somewhere. Here comes Jughead. Yeah, he's waving at me. He's, he wants to get right on the line and make sure he can see it. Here comes Jughead holding it off. It's good. He's got to get on the brace, keep that yoke back. Sub 100 feet. Drum roll, please. Just waiting to watch this spreadsheet update. Jeff Pohl's score 115. And Jughead, best score, 136. So Jeff held on to it. <laughs> now they're measuring together. <laughs> Trying to figure out. So fun to watch those two guys, those two friends compete together, share aircraft. I don't know. I have a hard time sharing my aircraft with <laughs> my 14 co owners. So, okay, let's wrap it up for light touring then. If I'm reading this spreadsheet correctly, Jeff Pohl, 115. Jughead Council, 136. And third place, Micah Lindstrom, 179. Really, really spirited thing. One thing that Jughead said to me when he walked up, he said, you know, light touring, one of the most competitive classes in National Stole, and he was not wrong. Definitely a nail biter at the end. Couldn't quite clinch it, but pretty dang close. Okay, so let's just chat about the full, complete scores for everybody. Don't want to get any nasty uh, Facebook comments. We'll get you all the scores right now. Clayton Stansel, best score, 232. Gary Standhart, 192. Jeff Pohl, that first place with 115. Dustin Mosher in the 120. Again, I think you're going to see his scores pop over to Light Sport. He's 373. Micah Lindstrom. 179. Raider Johnson in the Piper Pacer, 340. Joanna Justice in the 150 with 228. That is nothing to sneeze at. And John rejoining me at the booth with 136. So just a handful of feet into second place. Really? Wow. Have you? Oh, you maybe oh. haven't even seen these scores yet. Let's I, I haven't these, seen the scores. Let's leave, I'll let oh. you look at the scores when we go to commercial right now, guys. We'll be right back.
When it's time to recover and paint your fabric-covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA-approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy-to-apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps than any other product on the market today, saving you both time and money. While using cutting-edge technology, we offer a wide range of products, whether it's for work, play, antique, or aerobatic. We have you covered. Remember, we make paint fly. Ryan, <laughs> it's a good thing the wind's blowing because I need some extra air right now because I am still out of breath <laughs> from those last three passes. Let me let me give you a pirate for what we call a pilot report in the aviation world. It is uh, W followed by some I N D Y out there. <laughs> it is definitely a capital W. Well, yeah, um, the the I just pulled up the METAR from Yuma again. Uh, now they're reporting 11 to 18 knots. And it's, it's definitely doing that more here. I would definitely call this 15 to 20. I was surprised. If you notice, my first approach was really steep. Uh, really didn't get too much dirty air there. And, and what I did on my second ones, I brought it down a little bit lower. What I found was at about 100 feet out there, down there about the middle of the T-hangers, you got into a big sinker. And then once you got below it, it wasn't too bad. So uh, the air is, was easier to fly than I thought it was going to be. And I uh, really appreciate Jeff Pohl and his, his great hospitality, generosity to let me fly the Dirty Bird. It's always cool. And, uh, yeah, turned out well. Hey, we got the bush class coming up. That's these great. are the, you know, so these are our traditional when people think about bush flying. Now, this is what the con, the, uh, the contract pilot or the 135 operator in Alaska is going to put you in to go take you out for your moose or your caribou or whatever. And the uh, lineup for that right now is we've got three competitors in that right. We've got Matheson, <laughs> Matheson Fraser in an Aviat Husky, followed by James O'Brien in a Champion uh, 70C. And then we've got Austin Clemens. Uh, I jokingly call him the boy wonder sometimes, <laughs> young man. Austin Clemens in his, also in an Aviat Husky. His is a special one with the uh, reversible beta prop. Well, Aviat's got to love it because not only have they always been the prime sponsor behind National Stoll, but they got two of the three in this class. Now, this is neat. This is the Canadian boy down from Alberta. And uh, we, you know, I'm I real don't... involved in the hockey world. Those Alberta boys are big and tough and usually know what they're doing. And watch this stock airplane. 
Yeah. He was in practice this morning, getting that thing airborne at around 80, 85 feet. And we'll see what he does today. It looks like the wind almost died down just a bit. Wondering if that's the first, is that, I'm asking the booth the booth right now, is that the first Canadian registered aircraft in national stole history? Will. Oh, they had one at Swamp Stole as well. Okay, so it's the, the second The champ one. is 100 horsepower, big tires, otherwise no flaps. It's a lightweight airplane. You saw him get that tail way, way up in the air. That's great performance out of a champ. Um, you know, realistically, He's sitting here going, I'm probably flying for myself, flying for my own personal pride, but we saw it early in the heavies. The scratch is gonna be a factor. Yeah, Austin Clemens, you call him the boy wonder. I wonder is when does he sleep? Because as he gets that mad dog airborne, he's got that beautiful, beautiful MT propeller on it that we're gonna talk about more that has kind of set him apart in the stole competition world. But Nothing matters. You cannot spend enough money. You cannot buy enough product if you do not practice. And I don't mean practice once a week, practice right. a couple times a month. He practices hundreds and hundreds of hours to be as precise as he is. And I've seen Austin fly in really windy, difficult conditions, and he was always consistent on the line, which just blew my mind. You're going to see the crowd, and we'll kind of keep it a secret right now until after the first time he lands. But Austin and MT Propeller bring something special to that Christian Husky at National Stoll. And that MT Propeller by McFarland Aviation Products, the world's largest MT Propeller distributor, whether you're a backcountry pilot, mainline carrier, flight instructor, no matter what you do, MT Propeller is going to provide you with superior safety, performance, and maneuverability, as well as comfort. McFarland big big supporter of what we do here at national stole really appreciate their help and of course not just their props all their great aviation products I, we've all got them on our airplane all right here's the alberta boy come on that is nice right on the line we saw him practice probably 20 laps this morning and it pays off and once again he has stopped at less than 75 feet which means matheson is gonna put some pressure on austin and austin watched him practice all day Set right behind us, right here, and watched him practice time after time. I think he's been to the fuel pump three times already on that Christian Husky, so let's see what we can do. You now, know, I was go just going to say, Austin, Austin, uh, as we as uh, James walks up right now, uh, Austin f turning uh, base to final right there. Had him on my YouTube show. It's called Super Arrow Live, and we interviewed him, uh, I think it was two weeks ago. And I did not realize, he's kind of an understated young man, but super competitive and we started talking about all the ways he's been practicing basically the only thing he does is fly <laughs> yeah here's james all right so james bryan a little bit long with the champ landing a little bit of a bounce took some more out of it but he doesn't have flaps that he can dump all he can do is pin the mains on the ground but he stopped in less than 150 feet which means he's got one in the books so that's important for him. You know, that's one of the things, you know, you hear people talk about modern day society and kids. No, there's still great kids out here. And, and I've had the absolute pleasure to get to know Austin, compete against him over the last three years. And you can't ask for a nicer young man, respectful, humble, uh, just so fun to be around. And, and everyone that's his friends that I've met, his girlfriend, of course, his family. It comes from his parents and his aunts and uncles. Uh, just a wonderful aviation family. So let's watch Austin pin this. I told you he's going to be good on the line. He is. Look at that. I don't even think he even needed to do it. I don't think he did. I, I think he's holding something back still. I love if those that know Aviat Husky, they come out of the factory with that beautiful Husky dog emblem image on the tail. And Austin's has kind of modified his a little bit. It's kind of got a little more snarl and attitude snarl to it. it. Yeah. And uh, that is definitely appropriate Whoa, for this. 64 foot landing for Austin there. Sherwood Park, Alberta, which is a suburb up to the northwest of Edmonton is where Mr. Frazier is. Great takeoff again, 101 to start with, and we'll follow it up. He's, uh, he's got about 1,300 hours, been flying for five years, but uh, he's only 22 years old. It's great to see youngsters that are just dedicate their life to aviation. And he does a lot of his flying uh, up in the mountains up there. He's flown this Husky now for three years, about 700 hours in it. Oh, I apologize, everybody. Couldn't even get to the well, mic button on not that like one there's time. not a lot of dust in the air right now. Well, there is that. There is that. Is 
Here comes Austin, got that tail up really nice and aggressively. Right, there we go, that's a sub 75. Even as he gets airborne, he looks over to the right, checks that thing out. Yeah, it was like he's looking to see where, where he took <laughs> off from. He's got enough, yeah. got enough time. You know, and he's not just good in this. He's uh, he's one of the highest time steerman pilots around, especially that's for true. his age. He instructs, he runs, uh, flies charters, he's got the Husky, the Cubs, amphibians. He's flown all sorts of things. Been flying since he's about 12 years old. And the family's up there at Stearman Field at Benton, Kansas. And if you'll notice that last name, Clemens, you'll also see him out here on some of our signs, Clemens Aviation. And Clemens Aviation Products, they just pretty much take care of everything. Why don't you tell us even more about them well, there, Clemens Ryan? Clemens Aviation, thanks for teeing it up. It's a family-owned operation located in the Wichita, Kansas area. Like you mentioned, Clemens is proud to offer one of the most unique operations in the aviation industry. That's covering aircraft sales, management, flight testing, maintenance, and airport development. If you're ready to take off, come see why our combined family expertise makes Clevens Aviation a superior choice. Oh, yes! Nice! That was a perfect! He dumped the flaps. He deflared the airplane by putting the forward stick into it, reduced the angle of attack, forced the airplane onto the grounds with the brake set. That was a great landing, and Matheson just threw the gauntlet down and said, okay, I think Austin's better be getting into the... Uh, re tricks yeah, for that empty propeller to, soon. See if he, <laughs> Real see if he soon. Pulls that out. Now we were just talking with the judges a second ago. Again, we were talking about that light sport class thing. James O'Brien in the champ technically could qualify for the light sport class. No flaps, 100 horsepower or less. Bringing it in here. Oh, this one's looking good. Oh! A little bit of a tiny little bounce. bit past the line, but definitely better than his first. Wow, talk about consistent though too. Look at that previous score. Matheson put down a 68 takeoff and a 68 landing. Puts him in the lead at 136. That is ahead of Austin. Really nice improvement though on that champ. And that's tough in these windy days. That champ is a really light airplane, and uh, that is not easy to fly really well. There's no flap, so it's just AOA and drag that he's trying to manage. Here comes Austin now. Let's keep it tapped. It's looking Listen. stable. Looking stable, ears. consistent. I like that. Whoop. Yeah, the crowd likes it. That was, that's going to be shorter than 68 Super feet, I think. Short. Not a lot. Now, one thing we talk about a lot is uh, we're not really concerned with passenger comfort in these landings. There was a little bit of a, sometimes you see them kind of plopping in, and I think that's by design, right? You want to put more of the energy down into the ground than you do forward in the forward momentum. So we're not concerned about how good it feels. It doesn't need to be a greaser. We can just get it down and stop. Well, that is true. And I'll actually, once they take off, I'll tell you a story how that applies even to, to passenger operations. You don't always want that smooth landing. That was a nice smooth takeoff though out of Matheson. He's got two good ones in the book, so he's really gonna go for that line hard. And Austin Clemens. Austin taking the lead back at 114. So the challenge, these two are going at it. Can you imagine coming down to your first dual contest in the US? That's a long flight from, from <laughs> Sherwood so Park, Alberta. And coming really all the way to the Mexican border and knocking Austin Clemens off? That would be something else. Because I know there's some other people down here trying to knock Steve Henry off the podium. I tried my best to knock Jeff Pohl. I couldn't get it done, though. Austin off really aggressively. I'm going to call. Oh, man, maybe trying to read the, the, the hand motions of the judge there. We'll see what the takeoff was there. Austin's last landing, by the way, 50 feet. Wow. Jeez. And so you talk about putting down a firm landing. So in my day job, for Alaska Airlines, I fly 737. I fly through southeast Alaska. We come into 5,000 foot strip covered in rain and snow a little bit. Mr. Doug Jackson, the man behind this wonderful National Stoll Series there saying hello to us. And there are days that we go in and we purposely plant the airplane on the runway fairly firm. Uh, the passengers that are used to flying through southeast, we have a leg, Alaska Airlines, we fly eight minutes from Wrangell to Petersburg. <laughs> Eight minute flight in a 737. You don't even always put the gear and flaps all the way up if you I don't bet. want to. But you come into those short runways and when it's wind, icy, windy, snow, rainy, yeah, we just do a partial flare and we firmly put the airplane on the ground for all those reasons you're talking about, killing kinetic energy. All right, he's got it all going for it. Oh, that was Woo. a good one. Just past the line, safe, 
Super competitive landing. He's Again, he's consistent. You know, we got the yeah. Mr. Consistent Prize right here. Yeah. He's like, I'll take that back to Canada. Need that Garmin, some of that Enridge, inhospitable Enridge. terrain. <laughs> I can yeah. tell you a story. I got stuck in the middle of uh, the Yukon at an airport this year with an airplane that wouldn't operate anymore. And it was three hours after we walked and hitchhiked and finally got into cell service. Good thing is, is the, the search and rescue effort was working. They were looking for us. But as soon as we got to cell service, it was making a whole bunch of phone calls. Right. And, and I have other devices similar to this, but they weren't of any value because you couldn't send custom text messages. So now there's a Garmin in reach in my airplane as well. Nice job with the champ. Oh, Ooh, look at that sub 100 got some feet. Applause. Got some applause on that one. I think he just beat me. <laughs> Let's see what I'm we'll glad, have to see. I'm glad he's not in the uh, light touring class. And we're, we're smoking through the Bush class again. And Jughead, you mentioned it before. Bush class is, I think, what people most people think of when they think of Stoll. These are the kind of planes that are flying up in Alaska, to put, putting in work, doing a ton of work. Uh, planes that are landing on the side of mountains, backcountry strips, whatever. All of the planes you've seen today clearly can do that. But these are the ones that people think of the most. Look at Austin. Oh, now, he's got some dirty in. wind this time. This was the toughest. Ooh, oh, I, he good. got it. He was good on the line. Oh and my goodness. Less than 50 feet. Okay. Wow. Best landing. Well, what he never did was he. I never heard him go into reverse. This never. is a beta capable prop, which means a lot of times he will land, go full power with the propeller pushing the airplane backwards. When he goes to park it over here, watch him. He'll spin it around. Beep. Beep, beep, back Look it up that. right into the parking spot. 77 for a combined run for Austin Clements. 41-foot takeoff, 36-foot landing. That is going to keep that. So I, I have this little weird piece of aviation knowledge in my head, and that's that an F-14 Tomcat is about 50 feet nose to tail. So Austin could have landed on the back of an <laughs> Fourteen just then. So, oh, that is wonderful. So, our standings at the end of the Bush class. Austin Clemens taking first with a combined score of 77. Matheson Frazier is going to take second place home to Alberta with a 120 combined score. And James O'Brien with that Aronka champ, 100 horse, no flaps, doing justice at 210 combined. So, congratulations to all of them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this wraps up our Bush round. And this is where we're going to take a quick hour lunch break. We've got the food vendors back behind us, the taco truck at the end of the runway. Great chance to talk to the different pilots and crews, and we will see everybody back here in about an hour. Ryan and Jughead are out. Okay, so we are going to be on the on the break right here, but while we do... National Stoll Series in Somerton, Arizona, and uh, we are headed into a break for lunch because we got a lot of people we got to feed. But before we do that, want to talk about kind of a new exciting thing. We're about to do a demo, so everyone hang out. Once you get your food, come watch or watch before you go get your food. Watch this demo of a new potential way, ways we're experimenting. 
for National Stoll? You know, we're always trying to push the envelope here, Ryan, and, and push the entertainment and the competition. And so instead of starting that a line and taking off and seeing what you get, what we're going to do during this demonstration is kind of like uh, in drag racing where you got to tell them how fast you're going to run. We are going to have the pilots basically say, I can take off in 65 feet, and they're going to go to a line where they say, I can take off, and they have to take off prior to the main line on the runway. And if they go past it, they scratch. Mm. And then they're going to come in and land at a given point and try to go to that line and not go past it. So kind of the opposite of what we've been doing. But this is kind of a... You knowing what your capabilities are, gambling, take of it as an airplane version of I can name that tune in five sure. notes, four, three. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. that's so exactly what we're talking. So just to recap, this is new. This is new to me, and I want to make sure I understand it correctly. So takeoff side of it, they'll basically be taxing to where, to the distance they think they need to take off before the line. Exactly. Just and like the end of the sandbar. That line is the end of the sandbar. I got to be airborne before I get there, or maybe I'm water skiing, and that, that's a whole nother topic out there. That's <laughs> I a whole we nother topic. Talk about that. <laughs> of course, we're supposed to talk about it. Yeah, you're not water skiing if you're not water skiing, right? That's true. All right, that's true. So, yeah, they're going to take off before the end of the obstacle, just like a sandbar out in the real world, and the same with the landing. Got so. it. So it's all about calling your performance in yes. this demo we're about to see. So that'll be in just a few minutes. I think we've got. Uh, two aircraft that are going to give that a go. I think Austin Clemens and Jeff Pohl are going to come out. Of course, those guys have kind of competed and had some rivalry fly-offs against each other in the past with uh, with the Dirty Bird and, uh, of course, Austin's wonderful Husky. And you don't... i got to thank Sport Aircraft Seats because when I fly my airplane all the way across the country to these different stool competitions, and I'm fortunate enough to get to fly a lot of other people's airplanes and ferrying them... There's nothing better than knowing that I'm going to climb into an airplane and be sitting on sport aircraft seats. Their style, their durability, their comfort is second to none. And you can be in them for 10 hours and be comfortable all the way, or you can be coming down final today like it was bumpy and rough. And uh, the old butt might have been gripping that seat cushion just a bit. Just sport a aircraft bit. seats is always going to keep you comfortable. We appreciate Daniel and everybody up north. Let's go eat. Hey, I'm Chad, and I am legend. So once I decided I wanted to buy a bush plane, a Super Cub, before I began my research, I had never even heard of legend aircraft. I had heard of a couple different manufacturers, and that's really what I started with when I started researching. It was only through doing different Google searches and, and getting on the forums and, and hearing about this legend brand that uh, I began to really research them. and, and what I know today is uh, Legend Aircraft is the best kept secret in aviation. Uh, it doesn't appear to me that they spend uh, their money on uh, a lot of marketing and advertising. Um, they spend that money on uh, research and development and, and into building a great product. Another factor for me, uh, aside from the build quality differences, the, the willingness to customize, uh, the customer service, their, their willingness to sit down and almost do a, kind of a, 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 a ground-up, one-off creation. On top of that was 
the other manufacturer that I was looking at, if I were to spec out this plane as close as they could get, I was getting less value, a, a less rugged, less sturdy, not as well built airplane, and an airplane that ultimately at the end of the day was not exactly what I wanted. That plane spec'd out at about $100,000 more than the yeah. Legend Aircraft version. And what I ended up with here with the America was exactly what I wanted out of a Bush plane and out of a Super Cub. And, and Legend Aircraft was willing to, to build that for me. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Jughead Council here and Ryan. Wow, that was a fun morning of competition. We had some really tight flying, strong winds, giving us some really good scores, but it is going to get even better this afternoon. That's right. So just as a recap, everyone, this morning was pretty uh, pretty windy, pretty, what did I call it, gusty and dusty here at Outlaw Stoll. And uh, yeah, we're about to kick off the uh, little experimental bush class. And wow, what a packed class of talent we've got here. We've got uh, Joe Pops Dory in his red Coyote Ugly uh, Super Cup home. We've got Rick Boardman in a Cup Crafters uh, Carbon Cup. Frank Knapp, I actually got a sticker on my water bottle right here, Flying Ace. Frank Knapp's gonna be in his Super Legend. And then CeCe Pocock in the Cessna 170B. We've got some really heavy hitters of well, bush flying, uh, flying in this class. If you want to call the current world champion with a 23 and a half foot combined takeoff and landing, that's a world record holder. Frank Knapp, yeah, that's a heavy hitter. That's <laughs> a heavy say hitter. the least. And, uh, and while he is in a different class than Steve Henry, Neha 6, doesn't mean that they aren't still competing against each other because there's the overall title here and uh, a lot of great prizes out there. You know, Fat Tire Cowboys always put out a wonderful prize basket for our competitors and winners, and uh, they're aviation's number one cleaning products, allowing you to safely clean your airplane finish. Made and tested by the aviation professionals in Texas, of Fat Tire Cowboys focus on spreading the passion of aviation, the love of God, and just overall living a good life. So we always appreciate the uh, Fat Tire Cowboys and being a part of National Stole. I want to talk a little bit about what this class is functionally for you. Uh, basically, what experimental bush or alternate bush sometimes, it's, it's otherwise, uh, it's other FAA certificated and experimental aircraft. So uh, experimental certificated aircraft, I said that probably the most confusing way possible, uh, with a gross weight <laughs> above 13, 20 pounds. So these are things like Bearhawk Patrols, Carbon Cubs, uh, Dakota Super 18s. I haven't seen one of those in a while. The Legend Cub, you know, the one Legend of the great Cub, sponsors yeah. of the National Stools, and we've had several of them uh, end up on our podium. I don't think we have any that made it in today, which is too bad. Yeah, the so, Moak, the Moak that you uh, Mother see, of all Cubs, that yeah. That is in this class often. Um, yeah, American Legend Aircraft, big supporter of National Stoll. We really appreciate that. They're uh, building the most innovative and advanced Cubs today, and if there's any notion in your mind that flying one of those airplanes is a sensation, both beautiful and profound, you owe yourself to try one on. There's only one true original. Realize your dreams, American Legend Aircraft. You know, a lot of people that, that have never been to a stool contest or are wanting to learn more about it, one of the questions we get asked all the time, Ryan, is, well, what's your airspeed or what's the instrument that reading for this or that? And while Sarasota Avionics provides great instrumentation for your cross-country needs, your instrument flying, uh, or just your basic VFR airplane, everything that you're seeing being done today is simply what we call the true seat of the pants stick and rudder flying. Uh, we're way too slow. Our airspeed indicators, if they're indicating anything at all, they're completely inaccurate. The only tool that some pilots might use out here that can help them is an angle of attack indicator. Sure. But the problem is, is unless it's either giving them tactile feedback or direct in their line of sight, 
Uh, things are happening a little too fast. We're just a little too close to the edge for even those to be a primary reference. This is just true. Guys and gals have gone out to altitude, and this is what we teach everybody. Uh, you want to learn to do this is go fly your airplane for the next 10 hours with the stall horn going off the entire time because that's basically what's happening here. Learn exactly what it feels like when it's super slow, when you're behind the power curve, where rudder becomes your primary control for keeping the wings level or picking up a low wing and just get a true feel for your airplane. It's not that we see most of these airplanes when we stall them right now, the nose doesn't drop. That's because there's no energy. Uh, what happens is the wing simply quits producing enough lift and they just settle. We feel them fall out from underneath us. And that's really what the guys are flying here is right on the edge. And of course today, uh, we've seen it tough with the challenging conditions. We've seen one guy actually, no kidding, just do a full stall recovery right there at the line and execute the go around. One of the guys though that is one of the best at this, he lives up in Nevada, so he is used to flying in high density altitude, high windy conditions. This is one of our favorites, Joe Pop's Dory, one of the legends, one of the grandfathers of the stall competitions. He was doing YouTube back before they had the internet, That's I think. That's right, yeah. yeah. I was gonna if say, you haven't I seen remember. him sitting in a bathtub playing a banjo to his <laughs> lovely wife, you just haven't been out there. But uh, this is an an experimental bush uh, custom built airplane 160 horsepower supposedly Whoa. yeah he's going to be he's going to be in the competition with yeehaw and frank knapp and everybody else it's if if smiles and kindness could help you get off the ground sooner i think he'd probably win every contest well and the thing what's interesting is in terms of uh joe dory i mean i, I remember hanging around bush flying internet forums and people people talking about like oh like is this plane good enough for a uh, bush flying or is this plane good enough for bush flying it's like hey i know uh i know pops dory could uh fly the wings off whatever it is and make it work so there's well, a lot of reputation there absolutely well here we go this is uh rick boardman he is a Nebraska Crop Duster just got into the stole drag racing and stole competition in the last two years and obviously brings a ton of skill and experience. And you talk about egg guys. His buddies last night were spraying the field down below. That's Morris Egg Air and sponsors of part of Outlaw Stole here in Yuma, so we appreciate them. But it was cool, a little extra air show watching those guys spray the vegetables at night on four big lights, make a couple passes. But Rick Boardman knows all about that. He was getting just a little excited. Here's Frank all right. Knapp. Here is our current world record holder, Frank Knapp. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> ho, ho, Basically ho. Somebody go stand right next to the line because that experimental bush, that is actually a legend, is what it started out as with that Titan 340. We could have the sponsor on the podium with that or maybe even a break a new world record. All right, we saw lots of 170s earlier, Ryan. This one's a little bit different, isn't it? It's a little different. We got CC Pocock. In that classic Bush Air, highly modified Cessna 170. So what he's done is he's taken that airplane, he's got it into the experimental exhibition category, and he has done all sorts of developmental mods. And it's, he's not doing it because he's trying to win contests. He's doing it because he's trying to further uh, demonstrate and develop what the 170 airframe and what the 0300 engine. So that's an 0300 engine running nitrous oxide, about 100 horsepower boost. Okay, so now we're talking yeah. 250 horsepower. Cut. Custom Sterno uh, propeller. He's got leading edge slats. He's got, you'll notice the uh, shocks underneath it. Great, great modified airplane. And of course, one of the best instructors we have out there uh, for teaching people up in Calnavera at his Bush school. All right, here's Pops Dory coming in on final. Pops is one of these guys that likes to come in a lot steeper, Ryan. You see that today? Super, super slow. He's got those leading edge slats on as well. Hanging it, hanging it, hanging it. Oh, hold oh it that is looking it. good. Oh. It's, oh, oh, no, that was short. That was short by a foot. No. He had, he had it in helicopter mode for sure, but wow, what is that? something else there oh that that is a heartbreaker because i know he's one of the favorites out there okay rick boardman i love that wigwag you know there's wonderful led lights probably out of wheeling but if you want to just add safety to your airplane uh, those leds are so much brighter and that wigwag feature makes it so nice and easy to see so bringing in this carbon cub 
He was out doing a lot of practice this morning in the windy conditions. There, last minute, slows it up, super slow behind the curve, bumps Looks it good. right on the line. Oh, this is going to be tight all that day. Shorts. I would not want to be a line judge today because it's going to be a matter of inches. Excellent job, Rick Boardman, Nebraska boy. So we heard, uh, we heard as we were getting a CC off the ground that Frank was having a flap issue a little bit, but looks like he's uh, looks like he's got that all cleared up. He's, he's, he's going to be uh, order is going to be a little bit mixed up as we sort that out. He'll be in after CC it looks like. So here comes CC now. 21 foot landing for Dory, but it was a scratch. That is oh so bad, too bad. I mean, we're talking like, what's interesting is this wind today and with these exceptional pilots that have come in today, normally uh, best overall goes to light experimental uh, class aircraft. Maybe not today. Here's CC. Not at all. Good. Oh. That one looked good on the line. He's been working hard to get those down. Looks Stopped like at around 50 feet. Was that a thumbs up from the line, Judge? It was an X. It was oh, a scratch for CC. No. So we got the same thing happening today with the gusty conditions now, even for these uh, these legends. But that was that was so close to the line. They did everything but the very last couple inches correct. And, and that's just a – you can't fly at that precisely in the winds this way. All right, let's see if Frank's got the – looks like – Symmetrical flaps, he's down low. He's going to continue to slow this Legend Cub up. Titan 340. A lot different air than what he's used to in Valdez, Alaska. He spends his winters down here with his lovely wife, Chris, in the desert. And uh, from Palmer, Alaska. Ran a successful business up there for years. Here Get these air streak tires right on the line, Frank. There it is. Thumbs up from the line, Judge little longer roll that I know he wanted but he's got it uh, he's got a good counter he's got a good score there so of course I, I wanted to ask you Frank Nav if people don't know I mean kind of a legend right uh, with Lil Cub <laughs> in, in, in the stole world he is the legend like, with we, Lil Cub yes. yeah after you when you get done go home check out Lil Cub Google Lil Cub and look at that that different aircraft that he had like highly modified again and just mind-blowing performance out of something that started, I believe, Lil' Cub was a J3. J3, no fabric on the on the empennage behind the fuselage, super lightweight, and like I say, 23 and a half current world record holder in uh, at Valdez, and, and he's a, been a Valdez champion I don't know how many times over, and of course Valdez, Alaska, the kind of the first of the popular big stool contest that goes on every May, and uh, Joe and his crew up there do a wonderful job. Always a competition between uh, Frank and, and Steve Henry don't get to compete against each other that often. A lot of times Frank and his wife would run the stoll contest out at Oshkosh at Air Venture each year. So he was busy working, making it happen, bringing it to all the folks versus competing in it. So it's neat to see them both here. All right. Just as we head in, I wanted to say, so Frank Knapp, uh, 77 feet is current first place, 77 feet combined in uh, his, his legend cub there. Rick Boardman on the board as well with 92 feet. Joe Dory and CC Pocock DQ'd that round, but I'm sure they'll get on the board before we wrap it up. Whoa. Whoa. So that's an even. Whoa. Huge vertical there. <laughs> So Pops had a 45-foot takeoff with a scratch landing of 21. That takeoff there was definitely shorter. Let's see, 32 feet. Oh, I think that was just a little bit of, of taunting, too. Everybody else could <laughs> see that, and he put on a little celebratory climb at the end. A little for bit sure. of angle of attack there, for sure. Here comes Rick Boardman. He's got that 2015 Cub Crafters Carmen Cub. He's got a Titan 340. Oh, nice. He got all that. He got all that. You'll notice the uh, the Acme tail wheel suspension. And when that tail came down, it allowed that nitrogen spring cartridge to compress all the way. That maximizes his angle of attack. And that airplane lifted off. All of that compressed, which is an indication that he got everything out of it. That score of 42 feet. So that was six feet better than his first. That's a significant improvement. Frank cheats it into the wind just a little bit. 
gets it flying, he immediately pulls the power off, one notch as a flaps, and now just cruises away at about a 20 knot ground speed. I, I was going to talk about that cheating into the wind. Now that we're having a little bit more of a crosswind from the left for our pilots, it's kind of to our backs here at the uh, announcer's booth, you're going to see them shift more to the right side of the runway so they can angle it just ever so slightly more into that headwind. <laughs> CC not messing around either. No, not at all. What I didn't hear, and I couldn't tell if it's because of the wind, is normally you can hear when he hits the nitrous and that RPM comes up even higher. And more importantly, you hear it when it comes off. And I didn't hear it coming on, and I think I heard it come off, but it might have just been a reducing the throttle, because I know when on my passes, basically as soon as I got up, I lowered the nose, I put the flaps back to 10, and I took two, 300 RPM off the engine right away. Well, and we didn't see Austin use his reverse pitch beta prop uh, today, and I'm wondering if the extra wind and stuff is negating some of the need for some of that extra oomph. I, I think so. It, it really is. All right, so we got to get on the board now. For yeah, a pop you just story you're, here. you know we got to be impartial up here, but it's really tough not to root for Pops. He's just such a great guy, and his son Pop Story Jr. And then last weekend, uh, his grandkids hanging around. Such a great family. Look at that rudder dancing. Beautiful paint scheme. The Coyote. Come on, he's definitely going to make it count on this one. Well past the line. Gave up much more than he wanted, but he's got one in the books. So I'll guarantee next time he's going to be aiming right for that line. Because that line, he went 20 feet past the line. I, uh, I'm i going to put that one on TikTok probably later. <laughs> it was a good one. <laughs> kid, yeah, the land kids in your TikTok, I've heard of it. I have no I idea love that you is. think I'm young enough to be called a kid. All right, Joe. <laughs> so, so that second run for Joe Dory combined 92 so he's actually tied with rick boardman right now who's next up for landing oh rick's getting it really slow look at that increased aoa look at that nice burst of wind oh, oh. i think that was an x yeah it was a by a foot foot and a half it's so tough uh, you know, one of the things we get asked a lot as competitors is like, hey, how do you get your airplanes insured for competition? Well, the best way to get them is go contact Lad Gardner Aviation. If you're looking for aviation insurance, look no further. Their extensive team of professional aviators will give you the attention not only that you deserve, but that you expect. Building a relationship with an agent that you can trust. Whether it's off airports, running float planes, your business jet, your corporate airplane, or your bush competition airplane. Lad Gardner Insurance. Give them a call. Have been great supporters of the National Stole Series all along. So Frank's, thank you. Frank's putting in work right now. He is. It's a light airplane, so the wind affects him a little bit more. He seems a little fast in that big float. Saw that big float, and it that was amazing. That was a scratch, and it looked to me like he went long. It is so deceiving to see right here. We're looking at a little bit of angle in that parallax that you talked about. I never would have called that a scratch from here. No. But we trust the judge. Literally, I thought it was eight feet long. And we uh, have, we have uh, cameras on the line as well. You can actually see, if you look closely, folks, at that row of cones, you can see there's a line camera kind of embedded within those cones there that we can go back and replay if it gets really close. Here comes Cece. So his first landing of 45 was a scratch as well. And these guys are really flying towards the edge. Chop it. Drop the flaps. Those big Acme shocks helping to absorb, not the impact, but what they're doing is they're taking out the rebound. Those Acme shocks are tuned, and they keep those Cessna spring gear from springing the airplane back into the air. The big tires and the gear will take the impact of the bounce, but to keep it from getting back in the air, he added those Acme shots. And when you start looking at the competitors, you'll see Acme products on a lot of landing gear, and there's a reason for them. Very popular for sure. Okay, wrapping up into round and wrapping up run one, headed into run three. Frank Knapp, first place currently with 77 feet. Rick Boardman and Joe Dory tied for second with 92 feet combined. 
and CC Pocock in fourth with 158 feet. Really kind of crazy as I'm looking through here, like takeoff distances. Joe Dory, 45 on his first one, 32 on the second one. The takeoff for Frank Knapp on the second one, uh, even though he scratched the landing, 29 feet and 21 feet on his first one. That's insanity. That's basically a helicopter. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Whoa, again. And he, and he did not get all of that one. He left something on the runway there. That airplane got airborne before the tail came all the way down. So definitely had a little gust of wind there or was just being a little bit conservative with it. But uh, let's put it this way. That air tech coating definitely flew. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> flew there. So Summerton Airport here in Arizona. Boy, they've been such gracious hosts. It's just been wonderful. It's great to see all the people out here, and it's been a fun time. We sure appreciate them. And of course, Yuma International Airport as well. Great host of the National Stole. Rick Boardman, super consistent. 48, 42, and I bet this one's going to be in that mid-40s range as well. And remember, folks, that's there's a couple that we have the classes, right, where everyone's going to win. 39. Oh, Whoa. he went. There we go, 39. He, woo. We've got a 21 foot and 29 with Frank, but that 39 is nothing to sneeze at. Um, I was just going to say, in terms of you've got your class winners, right? We've got the most consistent winner, and we also have the best overall winner. So, oh, wow! I think Knapp was happy with that one. Way to go, Frank! That was good. Let's see what that score comes in. He was looking to beat a 21 footer, and he does it by a feet. foot, Ryan. 20 feet takeoff. <laughs> Bonkers. All right, CC Pocock. I'm going to listen and see if we get that nitrous. Yep. And that by far was his best takeoff for sure. So it almost makes me wonder if he wasn't pumping it on the first one. Yeah, pretty strong difference between these last two. People could do a separate show where it's just uh, Ryan and Jughead stare at a spreadsheet. Because <laughs> we want to like, oh, the suspense. We, what, what's yeah. the score going to be? We're coming in at an angle. We can't see it like everybody over here lined up right on the deal. But uh, speaking of lined up, Pops is there. He's dancing on the rudder. He needs to find the line. Get all the way across it. Oh, big burst. Oh, he. Oh. That is the wind just. You got to have the right conditions, and sometimes Mother Nature goes, nope, here's something extra for you. So we'll give a big round of applause, and we'll see if his score of 92 can hold up for second place for Joe Dory Pops. It really just depends on what Rick Boardman does next, or I guess maybe a, a different showing from CeCe. So we'll know pretty quickly what happens for second place there. Don't forget, folks, you can check out Scoring Lives. You can see the same. I think yours will probably look a little prettier than the spreadsheet that Chuck and I are looking at. Uh, scoring over at nationalstole.com slash scoring. You can watch on your phones and see. Here we go. Rick Boardman holding it off. He's on the line. That was good. No! Oh, they called it a scratch. You. Wow. Jughead is uh, I in, can't believe in that. awe on that one. I, I cannot believe that. You know, during the break, I went over and checked out the great uh, information over there at Southern Utah University, and they've got some wonderful aviation programs. If you have a young man or woman in your life that's thinking about what they want to do with their life, fixed wing training, helicopter training, maintenance training, just some wonderful uh, opportunities for them up there at Cedar City, uh, Utah. And uh, go over, talk to the recruiters, find out how you can get your career off to a flying start, become part of this great industry. So fun. The friends, the people, the places I've got to do because of aviation. All right, Frank Knapp, you're not going to set the world record again with that one, but it might get you moved up on the board here. He's had a 77 with that custom super legend. See if he's going to do uh, increase his lead. Pretty incredible there. And, and while we were chatting, Rick Boardman did squeeze out. A few extra feet, so he is firmly in second place. And look at that. Frank Knapp, 63 combined, combined on that last run. Wow. And to think he's done it in 30% of that distance with a little cup. 
That is crazy. Now, I know CC is capable of flying this thing down into the low 100 foot range. Let's see here. And he's such a competitive guy. He's not happy when he doesn't fly well. Losing some wind. There you go. He saved it. Yep. That's good. That's good. That's the that's the one he was looking for. That's going to be somewhere I think short of 50 feet approximately or really really close to it. Add that to that 60 foot takeoff and there's that low 100 foot score I've been talking about 103. Look at that 43 foot right, landing. Close. Holy smoke. So our last landings was a 41, a 43 and a 43. And that was the difference between a Carbon Cub, a Super Legend, and a Cessna 170 Experiment. And I think the the big takeaway there is the 170's got a bit more uh, bulk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a bit more bulk about twice as much bulk when it comes to weight as those airplanes. That was impressive. So, Ryan... How'd that finish up our experimental bush class? Well, maybe to no one's surprise, although, uh, and I, I gotta say, a little feel, feel a little excited to have seen Frank Knapp uh, fly in front of me. It's like a kind of like I'm tearing up a little bit. It's so cool to see him following him for such a long time. Frank Knapp, first place, 63 feet. Rick Boardman sneaking out in front of Joe Dory on that last landing with 80 feet. Joe Dory, 92 for third place. And CC Pocock in fourth with 103, again, in that Cessna 170. 40 feet difference between four very distinctive different types of airplanes out there. That is incredible competition. And that's what this, uh, A, the wind brings us today. It kind of shortens everything up. But it also made it so much tougher. You look on the score sheet, there's a lot of X's up there, Ryan, denoting landings that were short of the line. Yeah, a lot of scratches. Now, as we get ready here, let's talk about what's next up. Light experimental. Uh, this is, uh, man, things just keep getting more and more exciting. You're seeing aircraft that are more and more highly modified. Light experimental. These are uh, the experimental aircraft with a maximum gross weight of up to 1,320 pounds. And uh, we're going to get them all lined up. We're going to get them all ready to go. And we'll be back in just a minute. When it's time to recover and paint your fabric-covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA-approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy-to-apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps than any other product on the market today, saving you both time and money. While using cutting-edge technology, we offer a wide range of products, whether it's for work, play, antique or aerobatic we have you covered remember we make paint fly
we're back here at the Husky National Stole Competition in Summerton, Arizona, otherwise known as Outlaw Stole. And we are getting ready to kick off our light experimental class. Let's walk through the grid real quick. Colin Caneva. Mr. Old Green playing out of Lincoln, Nebraska. A That's newcomer right. to the circuit, but he's been competitive and learning rapidly. So I expect that he uh, has a good chance to find himself on the podium, Ryan. Not messing around with that one. Luke Ferentz in the Kit Fox S7S. And then we got a really unique airplane and a really unique individual, Levi Nagas out of uh, Colleen, Texas. He has a two-third scale replica Storch. This thing is so cool. This is a, a German observation stole airplane from back in the late 30s, early 40s that they used, you know, in the war. And it's such a neat airplane to see fly here. And, of course, then we've got Steve Henry Yeehaw 6. Yeah, Steve Henry, definitely uh, when he gets to the line, you might want to plug your ears. <laughs> it's a loud aircraft. Uh, definitely something to watch. I want I want to spoil it too much for you. And then uh, <laughs> the back of the pack, Ace Spratt in a 2013 Carbon Cub coming in from Badwater, Wyoming. This is kind of the western lineup. We got... Uh we do, we do got a guy lost from Nebraska, and we got an Arizona, Texas, Idaho, and Wyoming. So a good, good representation of pilots from all over, and a good representation of different airplanes. Yeah, nice one for Colin Kaneva, and uh, the host and Mayday Stoll founder, and his wife Angie and daughter are here as well to watch him compete. So we welcome them to Yuma and Summerton Airport. That was a good score, 34 yeah. feet 34 to start, feet, Ryan. Not messing around, and it feels like I'm going to pull up the weather. It feels like the wind died down a little bit, although I feel it kicking up. Oh, nice, Luke! Yes. So this little this little Rands, you know, it's it falls in the category. It doesn't have all the horsepower. He's running 100 horsepower uh, on that little light experimental, probably a a Rotax. Yep, 912. But that was a really good performance. Watching them practice yesterday and stuff, it, you know, it's not going to fly as slow as some of the others, but at 68 feet, that was super oh. respectable. Oh, Levi. Our, uh, uh, off in the uh, in the storage there. Uh, really, he was joking to me with me the other day. He was saying, you know, the way that the gear legs work on my aircraft, uh, they droop so much. Yep. All right. Here we go. Watch the tire. We're probably going to go about one, maybe two tire revolutions on this. Yeehaw. Apex. He knows it was good. That is what edge performance tuning will give you. Look at that. That is a snow machine engine. Originally running about 150 horse. It's now with the turbo, souped up, edge performance, pumping well over 300 horsepower. Yeah, right. it's, it's nothing to mess with. And do uh, you want to guess? I'll cover up the sheet. Do you want to guess? I'm going to go, uh, I'll go conservative, 20 feet on that one. On this one or on the, uh, what, on about, uh, what about Steve Henry? You thought 20 feet on Yeehaw? Yep. It's six. It was six feet. I was right three times with some change. <laughs> and Ace Spratt and the Cub Crafters off in 30 feet. So now, we were talking about in the last class how varied all the aircraft are. It was very similar again here. And you have two different approaches, right? You've got Steve Henry on one side of the spectrum with just brute force horsepower. No question he's an accomplished well, pilot. Well, not just horsepower, but a lot of great aerodynamic refinements on it as well. And more practice than probably anybody in the industry. Well, that's probably true as well. And then you've got Luke in the Kit Fox, which is more of like the, I like to call it like the lightness approach. He's like simple, light, the other side of the performance spectrum there. We'll now see. let's see if Colin can put Mayday Stoll back down Woo. the line. It looks like it was good. Little bit of rollout longer than he might have wanted, but I think he's got one on the board and he's going to be happy with that because we saw before scratches became the issue. And when you know the competition's tight and you're fighting for one to two foot difference, it matters. It really does. All right, here comes our storage. Now, there's I have never seen Steve Henry have to turn and get spacing because that airplane flies just about as slow as anybody. But he's actually having to grab some spacing right now behind Levi with his uh, with his storage. 
Here comes this Highlander tricycle geared. Nice job, carried it to the line, just passed it. Good job. Heavy on those brakes. Yep, it locked it's up. a really light airplane, so it makes the braking tough. That's his biggest hurdle, but man, what a great example out of that young man. 2017 Kid Fox. And then here comes Levi. So yeah, we were talking way, man, is he slow? He, he's so slow that Steve has actually turned downwind and coming back in around. <laughs> so, I mean, this storage, I mean, what to complete the thought before, like Levi was joking, he's saying, you know, there's so much travel in those gear legs. He's like, I wonder if it's a disadvantage that my wheels stay on longer than the other guys. And I was like, I don't know, man, just yank it off. And he kind of laughed. Um, you also hear people talk about his mustache a lot. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, uh, he has a windscreen. If he didn't, I think his mustache would probably uh, create enough drag to add 10 feet to everything. But just check out how cool this is. Now, this replica does have a Rotax motor. Oh, a little gust of wind, a little burst of power, but the tail wheel hits right on the line, so it was good. That's got him down in around, I would say, 70 feet. Love watching those giant landing gear legs just kind of yeah. squat down. The other fun thing about the inside, I was kind of poking around. It's such a unique aircraft. Uh, a lot of the control connections are accessible from the rear cockpit. And so if you're a passenger, what you're greeted with is everything's painted bright red. And it all says, don't touch this. And it don't. keeps moving the whole time. Yeah, yeah, it's moving as you're flying in it. Very simple design. Okay. Steve Here Henry. comes Steve Henry and Yeehaw. As a reminder, six foot, t six foot takeoff. Let's see if he can find the line, though. Getting it slowed, hanging it. He made it safe, good, aggressive braking, but I know he's not going to be happy with that. He actually has different components on that wing. He'll add or subtract a couple feet off the wing tips of that wing, depending whether he's racing it or doing traditional stall. And he uh, he sits there and you know flies in the backcountry with it. A lot of people he now carries it in a trailer. But he and I have gone cross country to Oshkosh and many stall competitions. Sure. I come out of Snohomish, Washington, and one fuel stop later I can be at his place. So that airplane is a good cross country machine. It it, it cruises the same speed as my 170, and you know he flew it from contest to contest for years i'm just trying to look up the uh, the weather right now to see if we have any updated weather i feel like the winds are a little less all right so a sprat coming back in gotta have that love that name when you're in a competition gets it past the line oh gets a big float on it so he's not gonna like that one he's just gonna kind of let it roll not even uh gotta get it he did actually bring it to a stop at 180 but obviously when you get that big gust of wind short final there's nothing you can do so speaking of gust of winds, current winds at the uh, Marine Air Corps Station, 9 to 18 knots, so 9 gusting 18. So lower on the bottom end, but still quite a large gust spread. Big gust. And what we're not seeing here on the ground, we're not seeing the dust blow like we were earlier. So we definitely know the winds have come down from this morning's competition. So that's going to level the playing field out just a little bit for everybody. Want to talk real quick about one of our prize packages. We talked about Fat Tire Cowboys before. Uh, they contributed their, their product, Bull Spit. <laughs> Bull Spit Airplane Cleaners. Love the name. Uh, it's aviation's number one cleaning product to safely clean your airplane's finish. Made in Texas by aviation professionals in Texas. That's from the Fat Tire Cowboys. That's something that uh, all the folks here are competing for as well. All right, Mr. Colin Keneva, let's go, buddy. Let's get this carbon cub in the air quick. You set the standard on the first one, and that one was good. That one was good. Doing the boys in Lincoln and Mayday stole proud. You know, and you mentioned before that Colin's kind of new to the circuit, and he's come in with just a lot of enthusiasm. He's also working in the other stole sports, stole drag, et cetera. And uh, I remember the first time he competed, he's like, I'm just here to have fun, and now he's here to compete. Yeah, but there's nobody funner. Nice job there, Luke. You saw the airplane starting to settle. He ran the risk of touching the mains again, but he didn't. He didn't, and he keeps it airborne. All right, Levi, let's get this German stork airborne. I'm going to concentrate on watching that gear. It extends oh, up. yeah. Oh. Did he touch again, though? He did. 
I, his tire was locked when it came off, and it rolled again. Oh, it touched. That's a bummer. So that is too bad. Back in. So now Steve has a couple different techniques. He'll pick up the tail in lower wind conditions, but right now we're at about that point where sometimes he just keeps the stick back. He actually leaks, holds the brake set until it skids and lifts from a three-point, and that's what he did today. Wow. Huge oh. vertical there. That is impressive. That is impressive. And for anybody out there interested in building Highlanders, obviously Wild West Aircraft is a dealer. Uh, they build airplanes. They uh, mentor and help customers build their own airplanes. And he's got a number of great uh, improvements you can make on your Highlander. 17 feet for Steve. Oh, Henry Ace tried it early. He didn't go initially. You saw that tail bounce, but it lifted off the second time, and it's still going to be a pretty short takeoff. Yeah, so Steve's second is double more than double his first. And the next closest in terms of takeoff distance is actually Ace Pratt. Ace right there, and he's still, he's being consistent. He went from a 30-foot takeoff to a 35, and, and that was just the difference between that half-second early pull. Now, Colin is on the board with a 111, putting himself in third place right now. So let's see. 77 was a little bit longer than I really expected him to to have for landing. Now he's fighting the gusty conditions, obviously. So hopefully, it all comes together at the perfect time. He runs out of altitude, airspeed, and wind. Half an inch past the line. Gave up a little bit on that bounce. Yeah, he did. He seemed faster, too, and it looked like just a little bit of float there at the end. So he's not going to like that one. Because that oh. whole landing was longer than his first uh, combined. He just looked over at me and he just gave a big thumbs down. He was not <laughs> happy with that. Uh, sometimes you know. Sometimes you know. Okay. Here comes the Kit Fox now. Low. Low and to your right. Uh, yeah. I was looking like, no, that's a storage. And then he came out from behind the speaker. All right. Luke Ferentz. Chandler, Arizona. Local boy. Oh. I think that's a scratch. That here. one definitely is. Heard definitely the crowd. And he was betrayed by the uh, the tires with a little chirp there. So that's a bummer for him. But he is on the board still with 214 on the first run. So. Well, and here's a great example. The airplane Luke's flying today isn't even his. It's uh, He's got an aviation manor that lends him the... Uh, that Kit Fox S7 to go fly in the competitions. He's been a young man and has been flying since he's 16. He's not a whole lot older than that, as it seems like right now. They all look pretty young to me. But uh, but that's great. Sharing the, sharing the aviation love. So Levi's takeoff this time was well, that longer. Looks, oh, another big gust of wind took him long. And Former he's not Marine even stop. Recon, yep, he's not even going to do it. He's just going to fly it along. It's funny, we give Levi a bad time. He spent time in the Marines, spent some time in the Navy, and he spent some time in the Air Force, or in the Army. And he's like, yeah, I never was smart enough to actually get into the Air Force, but I hear they had it better than all of us. So, <laughs> yeah. He's probably a little too tough for the Air Force. He flew both helicopters and fixed wing. And now he flies fast, he flies slow, has several hangers, or several airplanes in the hangar, and his son flies, and just overall great guy that just loves spreading the, the uh, if you want a little bit the of word a of aviation. A little bit of a heads up, I got, I got a little inside scoop that there might be some uh, Levi Nogas merch coming soon. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I sure enjoyed sitting around the campfire singing while he picked his guitar this weekend, I'll tell you that. All right, Steve Henry, Yeehaw 6, Wild West Aircraft, Nampa, Idaho. Can he take Frank Knapp off? That Whoa, was a good one. That was a go. good one. He's got it stopped. And a smart competitor there. You saw him get ready to go, and then he looked over to the judge. Be like, Did you get it? Did Yeah, it Did was you get that it all the way away? there. 28 feet. That puts him with a 17-foot takeoff, a combined score right now of 45. 45 feet. 
45 feet. That is uh, obviously taking a strong position on the lead. So that, I mean, I live in a, like a suburb in Milwaukee. Fairly confident Steve could land and take off in my backyard with the fence. Even with, with, the, with the fence. With the fence. There you go. <laughs> Assuming the snow drifts are gone. Yeah, they're not gone yet, but we're working on it. Oh, yeah, quickly at six degrees. I, I see why you wanted to come down and work the Arizona show in the middle of winter. All right, Ace, this is looking good. Stable? Oh, just short, just short. Now, a little bit of a rule clarification for folks, just in case you're wondering. We only care about the main wheels. So this was a full scratch no matter what. But it is possible for you to put the tail wheel down before the line and as long as your mains hit after it's not a scratch so that only really applies to tail wheel aircraft you're not going to see that on we wouldn't see anyone like riding the nose wheel in on a nose wheel airplane but just well, something that comes up it's always the main gear that we're worried about before the line well ryan i gotta admit uh, you might have picked the better outfit today for the clothes because while uh, you know the, the tails is kind of my my trademark i will admit i think i got some sand underneath my collar it's starting to rub my, uh, oh, my neck yeah, a little dude, bit yeah. raw there that t-shirt and, and uh, flannel is looking pretty good now we're, we're definitely the opposite in terms of uh, dress code today uh. <laughs> i went i went uh hipster casual uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is casual for me i don't yeah. actually have black pants or my boots that's on true. that's true you don't have the black pants don't don't like to fly my boots as much i need i need that finesse of the toes to try to beat jeff pole all right colin let's get it going oh he is consistent really consistent on the takeoffs colin's and that's going for this in reach mini in front of us for the most consistent award yeah he's doing pretty good because the difference in his uh his takeoff and landing Takeoffs are very consistent. Landings are pretty close, too. Only a two. 34, a 36, and a 34 on his three takeoffs. Uh, no. Oh, nice. I think he nice. kept it off. I think he did. That left main came off last, but I think it is still going to be a good counter. Six feet is the standard that Yeehaw has set on the takeoff roll. Let's see if he can beat it. That's less than one rotation of the tire. And you'll see Steve point at all the judges and say, no, no. Also, you notice his tail just settled. He takes the compression out of the rear shock, allows that tail to come down. Whoa. And that allows him to have a greater angle of incidence in that three-point attitude, get airborne, AOA. That's how you produce lift. 14 feet, 14 feet on that third takeoff for uh, Steve Henry. So 6, 7, and 14. It sounds like the Marines are coming in fast overhead. I can't see them yet, but I can hear them. Oh, yeah, As there Ace they go. lifts off, what do we got? Some F 35s? Yep. A two ship of them coming in. Don't see that every day either. Got to see some uh, this weekend. I stopped in at Luke Air Force Base with a good friend of mine, Slap Goldsworthy, and uh, he showed me the F 35, former A 10 pilot. We flew T 38s together. Farm kid. He brought his Cherokee 235 in today and came down to say hi to everybody at his first time at a national stall. So it was great to have Slap here. All right, Levi, look at it. Look at that. It immediately started to lift up on its gear. That was. That was the takeoff that he knew that airplane was capable of. He might be right about the gear being a disadvantage, that maybe you'd get an extra foot or two without all the travel. Well, it wasn't built for con. Well, it was built for a contest. It was just a different type <laughs> different of contest kind then. Of contest. So, yeah. Okay. So they're in a little bit of a different order than last time, so we'll try to keep them straight for everybody. This should be Colin Keneva. Shared the mic with me a couple times over the course of the last year. Fun dude. <laughs> that's, that's an understatement. Oh, yes, that was good. Get on it, buddy. Get on it. Nice, nice. Should be happy with that one. We'll see if he gives us the thumbs up. Oh, he's not even paying attention. He's, 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 he's celebrating. He's good. He's good with that one. Okay. Same kind of approach. Luke has been very consistent with the way he's approaching the line with that low, low approach in the Kit Fox. You know, in the Kit Fox, you notice it doesn't have flaps. It's got flapper rons that run the entire length underneath the trailing edge, working together as an aileron on a flap. Oh, and that one dropped That's him just a little bit short. He won't quite like that as well. So 
So two scratches in a row for Luke, but he did get on the board with the first one with a total of 214. I don't know, you kind of got that water bottle all pretty covered up over there, but, uh, but Ryan, here's a uh, Jughead and Dakota zap Ooh. if you got room for it on I there. I know that. Yeah, yeah, throw that baby on there. That's what that looks like for everybody out in the crowd. Check on out how Jughead and Dakota are one seventy. Dakota's my yeah. 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 There we go. D I don't. I didn't bring any stickers. Dakota's my black lab. He flies and hunts and skis and plays with me everywhere. He's been down to Steve's place. Oh, look at that Whoop. thing hanging in the air. He knew that one wasn't gonna work. So Steve Hendry's gonna rely on his second pass as his best with a combined forty-five feet. Let's see if that's gonna hold up the whole way. Pretty large. Pretty large difference between our uh... second place is at 101, so I think uh, I think we're gonna do okay. Levi's got to bring it back in with the Stuart one more time. Now here's the deal, though. Collins' last uh, run 102, Levi 101. So it literally one feet separating first and second place right now. Or I'm sorry, second and third place. Not that good at math and numbers aren't my strength, but. Okay, so this is. Ace. Ace Spratt. Right on the line. He's super consistent on the line. I wonder if he has a little too much air pressure in those Alaska bush wheels, because you notice how it's bouncing. I'm not a seeing them really flex. Uh, hey, there's a nice big stool competitor. I don't think if camera guys maybe can pick that up. That looks uh, cool. That is. Uh, one of the British four-engine turboprop transports. It almost looks like a C-17, but when yeah. you look at it close, it's got the uh, the turboprops on it. I don't even remember what airplane that's called now. That, is that like a... A-400, I think, is... Oh, and yeah. the, the smart guy in my ear is giving us... So the Marine Corps trying to get involved in it. I noticed they didn't bring any uh, Harriers or F-35s over here to compete because they could definitely win in that regard. All right, Levi. Texas boy, Colleen. Currently in second place uh, by a foot. Colin's not going to be too happy about that. But uh, he's got a lot of ground to cover if he's going to try to catch up with, with Steve Henry here. Carbon Cub, all based on refinements, lightweight. Oh, nailed it! Nailed it! Levi! Way to go, buddy! I was talking smack, but maybe something happened there. Oh! I got the sticker on the water. Oh, bottle. look at that. All right. Ready to go. Okay. I could even I'd put it on that airplane. It would just blend into the camouflage. That You'd would. never see it. Let's see, Levi. What are we going to get out of it? He improved. He improved. So now his, his best score is 98 from nice. 101. So he shaved a couple of feet off, but that still solidifies Steve Henry in first place with 45. Levi Nogues, 98. Colin Caneva, 102. And then, uh, let's see, we got Ace Spratt in fourth place with 151. And a friend, Luke Ferentz. God, I, hope, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Luke. And the Kid Fox S7 Super Sport from Chandler, Arizona, rounding out the class with 214 feet. Well, Ryan, this has been an absolutely great day here at Outlaw Stoll with the Husky National Stoll Series. Our first time to be at Summerton Airport in Yuma, Arizona. And we've had such wonderful crowd here. We had great flying, winds to make it super uh, competitive. But we couldn't do it without the wonderful sponsors. So let's make sure everybody understands who's been out there and really taking care of us. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got, uh, obviously, we talked about at the top of it, the Sporties Pilot Shop giveaway. And uh, by the way, everyone, if you're in the crowd, we got one more class for you. This is the Light Sport class. Light Sport class is a new class this year in National Stoll. What we found was that in Light Experimental, uh, it was Light Experimental slash Light Sport, and you had folks in J3 Cubs competing with the likes of Steve Henry, and that's uh, that's a big differential in performance there. So light sport class, these are aircraft with less than 109 horsepower, and they have no flaps or pilot selectable lifting devices. So you're gonna see the classic, like right in front of you, as it taxis into the line here, the classic J3 Cub is in there. You're also gonna see aircraft 
like uh, many of the champs, things like that that we saw earlier today. The Clippers, the Legend, the Legend uh, Model 11, PA 11 is in that category as well. So, and uh, yes, yeah, so we got some neat stuff. We've also got a Taylor Craft, Eric Salzer out of uh, Yuma, Arizona. So here's a local boy for everybody to root for. Jacob Thompson's coming in from Mesa, Arizona. That's that's not that far away unless you're flying a J3 and then it turns into a half, half day like trip. A 70 yep. miles an hour. But you never complain about any time anytime you're flying a, a j3 and then another yuma native here jerry fletcher and his uh, phantom x1 that is kind of falls in the uh, ultralight category there super cool to see that i think that's a new for the first one for uh national stole to have something kind of like in that more ultralight type configuration so here's what's funny is the 85 horsepower is the high horsepower guy in this category <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's that what, that's Jacob in the J3. We got a 65 horse pedal Continental here in uh, Eric's Taylor Craft, and then we're down to a 52 horsepower Rotax with uh, the Light Sport Phantom. All righty. Are you guys uh, gonna pop Dustin and James over for sure? Yeah. Is it possible to throw their scores into the sheet? So we are looking for the judges. The air boss checks the line the runway is clear the airspace is clear here comes this first roll a lot of not not a lot of snort and power but look at that airborne at about 185 feet or so the judges are going to kind of have to reposition where they're standing to uh to spread out here and be able to judge these accurately talked about sod busters coming up the weekend before oshkosh uh that competition taking place at hartford airport where uh there actually is a cub Piper Cub only uh, flight school there. Oh, there's a nice lift off at about 112 or so, and our Marine Corps air traffic controllers over there are doing our judging for us, and we sure appreciate that not only what they do for our country, but the fact that on their time off, they're willing to come over here and hang out in the sand and dust and make this a better competition. Now, this is a cool airplane. I wouldn't want to be flying it today in this wind which goes to show just how much skill and confidence he has in his airplane. This uh, this thing gets airborne pretty darn quick. Whoop, there you go. Tail skid and all, Jerry Fletcher, local Yuma. His hangar's right down there on the far end. You know, I've never flown at anything like that, but I've always wanted to because it just feels like it'd be like a motorcycle in the sky. You feel pretty close like that in a G3, like the door open and everything. But yeah, you're definitely just sitting out there, exposed to the elements, having a good time with it. The, uh, but boy, it sure is affected by the wind. So tough form to fly in this today. Going to be interesting to see how long of a pattern it takes for him to get around <laughs> yeah. with the. Hopefully, he's gotten the corners. He did pretty good yesterday. He was running the pattern with some of the other competitors in the practice, and it it really wasn't an issue at all. Oh, all right, Eric helps out here with. Uh, with running the airport, it looked like, and kind of involved in, in behind the scenes supporting things for the National Stole Outlaw Stoles. So we sure appreciate that. You know, we couldn't couldn't uh, go through this day without thanking John Athen, who was kind of the guy the guy that came up with Outlaw Stole. He, he started the contest for the first year here last year, just a shoestring operation, kind of only a couple months to put it together but he did and it was a great event and look what it's grown into and nice it's going to go a little bit long touches down less than 100 feet no flaps there's no ability here really to control the extra drag so that's a tough tough condition especially in today's wind and he did a nice job you know the taylor craft too kind of a uh, little bit of reputation for being a floater a little bit of a floaty airplane it, it's got a really efficient wing compared to the other aircraft of its era so it was a lot faster than a lot of them in its area. Absolutely. True. Like 30 miles an hour faster. Look at the Cub just slipping it in over the power lines there. So now this can do two things by slipping it. When you slip an airplane, you actually reduce its stall speed because you're starting to get some Newton's third law coming into effect. That air bouncing off the side of the fuselage is pushing down, which is pushing the, the fuselage upward, creating lift. Plus, of course, you got Bernoulli's. And then also it lets him look out the side and see exactly where that wheel is. And now he straightens it out, floats it, gets a little bit of float, but a lot better than it was. The brakes are locking up, skidding nicely to a stop, keeping that tail down. 
Look at that, 131 from a yeah. K3. That's not, that's nothing to see. That looks like the aircraft's named Woodstock. Woodstock, perfect. Yeah, you see the little character up there, and that was well flown. I think that would have fit on top of Snoopy's uh, doghouse. And no I'm, problem at all. And I don't know for sure, but most J3s have heel brakes. Yes, they do. And i got to tell you, folks, if you're trying to push with your heel on a brake pedal while also pressing on a rudder pedal, that's a little... With your toes, at your feet, at an oblique angle. Yeah, that a is a true skill. And I don't think it was invented for people with size 13 feet like me. No, no. When I uh, when I fly the J3, I always got to make sure I'm wearing, like, uh, soccer shoes or something real tight. Otherwise, my feet don't fit in the uh, in between the that front seat there. And, and the I actually pedals. wear a pair of racing shoes. Like Pilotis? Um, I don't know what that is, but I, I go to... A race shop that has for like race cars, and I have a set of those. All right, there they, you go. They got the skids on the heels. I used them in the extra 300 all the time. They're low profile. They're comfortable. They make me look fast too. Excited to see what happens here. Oh, big bounce! Dropping but it in, but it yeah. works. Yeah, on, on the brakes. He's in there for second place. Yeah, right now. Uh, Jacob Thompson with 242 in the Piper Cup. That's pretty respectable. 110 takeoff and a 132 landing for it. And look at this. Five feet difference. 82 for the takeoff with Jerry Fletcher and that Phantom getting it stopped in 165. We have ourselves a race. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Five foot difference there between those two types, those two aircraft. Pretty interesting. Yep. Two more See, rounds of this to go. I'm loving it. Just saw the uh, the air boss is telling uh, some of these judges, like, you guys got to be a little bit further down. Yeah. We don't need anybody down here in the 50-foot range. We only got 65 to 85, what, 50, uh, 50 to 85 horsepower spread, you said? Yeah. All right. This is a 46 Taylor Craft. It's a BC-12. My dad actually... Uh, Fly it. It'll go. Nice. There, there you go. go. Much better. Right at 150. They're shorting at about 138. It looks like they're going to mark it in or 37. That's a good takeoff. That's a massive improvement there. So Eric's styling it in quite a bit. 147. So yeah, they, now if he can get that, you know, he got caught with a gust of wind. If he can get that float corrected right there and uh, get this thing on the ground, he's in the running. Here comes Jacob in the J3. J3 Jacob. Whoa, there we go. It's just there we go. it's just hard to beat that lightweight classic when it's flown well and it's it's uh, a little bit of help with the wind, but at the hands of a good skilled pilot and light airplane, they really can per perform. You can understand why Frank would take a J3 as the base for a little cub when you watch these flying right now. Absolutely. Nice! That is great performance right there. Perfectly timed that rotation. Tail skid on the bottom of that uh, nylon covered vertical step hit the ground just as he lifted off. While these folks are doing their patterns, I think one of the other things to mention about this class, this light sport class, is if you're looking to get into aviation, these aircraft are also the most accessible typically. We have seen a bit of a rise in used aircraft prices over the last couple of years, but uh, in general, these are the, they're burning the least amount of fuel per hour. They're more uh, attainable. You know, I think the, uh, the J3 that, or not the J3, the Taylorcraft my dad owned at one point, it was uh, offered to me for $15,000. I think it'd probably be a little bit more in today's prices, but these are aircraft that you could get for sometimes as much as like a nice Harley Davidson. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the thing is, Ryan, is we talk to people that go, well, you really should join. I was like, well, I've never done a stool competition. I was like, well, it's not about the competition. It's it's as much about learning and or polishing a fundamental aviation skill. This is on. Nice, perfect wheel landing at about 25 feet. Let's get those brakes going. They're smoking just a little bit. He's giving it everything he can. That was definitely better than his first effort. Nice improvement yeah. there, Eric. That may, may be one of the more beautiful landings of the competition. Yeah. But the only, you know, all these are basic fundamental aerodynamic skills that you learn as a student pilot, and it's simply a matter of taking them out and practicing them to a new level. You know, and we spend a lot of time up at altitude, slow flying on airplanes. We come down low, and we do lots and lots of practice real close to the runway, 
And, uh, and that's what I encourage everybody to do. Whether you ever come to a competition or not, it will definitely make you a better pilot for powered situations, out of uh, you know, engine failure type situations, obviously glider pilot, energy management. That's what it's about, smooth stick and rudder skills. So I really encourage anybody to get out there and give this a shot. It's amazing how competitive we've seen some different airplanes. Oh. Oh, oh, just short, just I was hoping, short. I was hoping he was doing the drag the tailwheel in thing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a scratch for, for Jacob. I wanted to point out just too, we had the scores come in. Eric Salter in the Taylor Craft, massive improvement between his first and second run. He went from 835 to 487. So really starting to dial it in there. And Jerry Fletcher still off on a medium final. Short, short to medium final out there, but he's coming in. All right. Definitely fighting some gusts there, and he looks like he's a little bit faster. He starts to slow it up here in the short hairs. Oh, but nope, that floated, that floated, that floated. And he knew it. He sees he's not breaking quite as hard on this one. He goes, okay, it's not going to be better than my last one. I know it was good. So let's save the tires and the reset for our last try on it. These are our last three passes of National Outlaw Stoll. Oh, so thankful Husky Aviot Aircraft are here to help us bring this great event to wonderful fans and pilots throughout the United States. And the number of events just continues to grow. We're in Jennings, Louisiana with Swamp Stole soon. We'll be back in uh, Texas. Uh, let's see what else we got. Well, we Sun and fun again. Too. We did. It's getting hard to keep track of them all. Yeah, so we've got a, uh, we're in Outlaw Stole now. Next up, March 18th, Swamp Stole in Jennings. And then we'll be at Sun and Fun in Lakeland at April 5th through the 10th. May 27th over to back on the West Coast, SoCal Stoll and, oh man, is it Tehachapi? Tehachapi, yep. I can pronounce words. Just say it fast and you'll sound like you got it right. Here comes the Taylor Craft. There, oh, I think, I think that, I think they're going, I I would have called it sooner personally, but I don't want to get in the middle of that. June 18th, Stearman Oh, Stearman Field, Field that's right. What a cool place to go. Benton, Texas. Go hang out with uh, the whole Clemens Aviation that's, family yeah. and fans. Austin's Austin's home court, adva home court advantage for that one. July 23rd, Sodbusters stole in Hartford, Wisconsin. We can see a ton of J3s. I bet they'll bring him. Woo! And then our last new event this year is uh, Georgia Stoll, Newman, Georgia. Yeah, September so. 24th for Georgia Stoll and Newman. Whoa, what's going overhead now? Oh, yeah, there we go. Sounds like more Raptors. And, of course, then we wrap up the National Stoll Series title at Lone Star Stoll, where we give both there's a local contest and the National year in Award. So that's a great event. Anytime you can combine cold beer, airplanes, and barbecue, I'm in like that. Here goes Jerry Fletcher coming off in the Phantom X1. And don't forget that we had two competitors this time, Dustin Mosher, James O'Brien, that technically qualified for this class as well. So we'll see how their scores stack up with what happened here uh, for these first three. And remember, head on over to our merchandise booth and enter to win a drawing with Sporty's Pilot Shop and the Tailwheel Checkout course with Patty Wagstaff, donated by Sporty's Pilot Shop. Free to enter. You don't have to be present to win. It's more fun to be present to win, though. And as we come around for our third class, after this, we'll be wrapping up the day's results, and they'll have the awards ceremony as well. Great chance to afterwards go talk to the various pilots, take a good look at the airplanes, find out more about this great aviation event and lifestyle. Eric come on, Salt. right on the line. Very nicely done. Oh, a little bit of bounce, but I think this deceleration's Ooh. doing better. Got to get that tail down. There we go. 350 feet. It's not too bad with no flaps. Not too bad at all. Oh, 
100 feet better than his first one and it's going to be real consistent on his second 348 so yeah he got it dialed in and uh, right now we're looking at a 487 for his best run there from Eric Saltzer in that Taylorcraft PC12 local Yuma guy so right now as of the first these three we have a really close battle for first place out of these three, uh, Jacob Thompson in the J3 with 242, Jerry Fletcher with 247. And Jerry's continuing to slip that J3 until he visually can pick up the line out the side door. Now he can, he can straighten it out, keep it airborne. He does about one length of the fuselage past the line when it touches the ground and a stop at around 115 feet. Nice job. I can see him literally leaning back as far as he could in the cockpit so that he's got enough room to pull the stick all the way back. I don't know if you noticed, but I did the same thing. And, and, and Joel's one, in the 170, Dirty Bird, you're both hands on the O, pushing on the pedals. Come on, stop, stop, stop. you got to be careful on some of those uh, old J3s on one of them. Depending on the crosswind angle, I've actually popped my lap belt off. Oh, really? While, while like, trying to get the like, stick, undoing yeah. Undoing the lap belt. And that's a little terrifying with the door open. All right, here comes uh, Jerry's last chance. That one's looking, oh, good. Much better. Much better. Nice. Get on it. Get on it. One. He's Ooh. sub 150 there. 143? Nice job. Combine that with a 42. This is going to be his best pass. And Jacob Thompson. 185. Oh, my that gosh. Is, that is bonkers. Okay. He so just moved himself, or he stayed in second place, but he just came up one foot short of taking the lead. So our light sport class winner at 184 feet in the J3 is Jacob Thompson out of Mesa, Arizona. Second place, 185, Yuma's very own Jerry Fletcher in that beautiful black and green Phantom X1. And great job by Eric Saltzer, improving on his scores in third place with a combined 487. Woo, Ryan, that was some good flying today, that wasn't was it? That was something else, and I want to see, I'm going to check with the booth. Do we have updated scores for Dustin and James? Are there any upsets there? They're, They're going to work check on that. On that. Perfect. All right. Well, let's. So, I think we're done. Our, our Garmin Mini inReach allows us compact satellite communicator and GPS, which has been provided thanks to Sarasota Avionics, yeah. is going to one of our winners, either most consistent or our best overall. I think the, I think the inReach is going to most consistent. I think best overall, if I'm not mistaken, is the D2 Air Garmin smartwatch, also by Sarasota. Lots of folks to thank. First people we gotta thank those, everyone in the crowd. You guys have been awesome today. Literally sitting through massive dust storms to, to see what's gonna happen today. Really appreciate that here out in the desert. Of Love course, that. McFarland Aviation bringing us all the great uh, support for all the competitions and the prizes for our wonderful winners. McFarland, you know, not only do they bring the little parts, they bring the big air parts. The uh, the propellers out there that so many of our performers are relying on as well, including Austin Clements out there taking first place in uh, his Bush class as well. All righty, here we go to summarize. Let's see if we have it. So actually, we have the updated scores from James O'Brien and Dustin Mosher from the earlier classes. So a little bit of a push further back, but not too much. James O'Brien actually first place, uh, I don't remember what he was flying, but James O'Brien in first place was 77 feet. Then Jacob Thompson first place with 184. Second. Or second place, thank you, with 184. Jerry Fletcher third place with 185. All right, so great, great competitive uh, series of scores right there in our light sport. And uh, boy, what a fun day. And I think we got all the rest of the uh, scores to bring up here. Our heavy touring again was, was owned by the 182s. First place going into Andrew Patry out of Ellensburg at 141. And then his flying partner and buddy Aaron Greer at 164 yeah, with man. third place coming in at 199. David Holderman in the Cessna 180.
light touring. Let's talk about that. I'll do that so it doesn't feel like we're giving any favoritism over. We got Jeff Pohl, first place, 115. <laughs> he's flying by As the As he's going right by now. on his one wheel right now. Jughead Council, 136 for second place. And we got a lot of numbers in this class. I think it's going to be Mike at third, Michael isn't Lindstrom, it? Michael Lindstrom, yeah, with 179 in the 170 for Michael Lindstrom. Let's go over to the Bush class. Our Bush, our favorite out there, Austin Clemens in his Husky, is uh, standing on top of the podium, proud once again with a combined 77. Matheson Frazier made the trip down from Alberta, Canada, worth his while. He, his Husky takes him to second place and a score of 120 with James O'Brien and the champion coming in at 210. Experimental Bush recap. Man, that was a fun one to watch. Frank Knapp, the legend Frank Knapp came all the way down. 63 feet for first place. Second place, Rick Boardman with 80 feet. Third place, another name that's legendary in my books, Joe Dory. And in our light experimental, Steve Henry, Yeehaw 6, has uh, taken the top spot once again with a combined score of 45 feet. Feet. Second place coming in here at 98 feet combined is Levi with his Storch replica out of Colleen, Texas. And in third place, 102 from Mayday Stoll, Mr. Colin Caneva and his Carbon Cub. Great bracket. I mean, we got winners of every type. And uh, just goes to show, it doesn't matter what you're flying out there. The most important thing is, Ryan, get out there and fly it, enjoy it, learn to max perform it. It's been an absolute fun day. It's been so fun to get to work with you. Again, we can't thank all our great sponsors enough. AirTech, Morris Ag, Sarasota Avionics, Legend an aircraft uh, I was going to say you're going to do that from memory yeah well, no no I'm not that smart I'm reading the flags out on the other side some of them are just blowing a little bit too hard for me though but rugged oh. radios husky aircraft legend aircraft so. all of our friends out there helping us make this happen of course uh, Aviat aircraft is especially thanks for the hat Aviat I really appreciate that uh Man, what? Yeah, I wanted. I just wanted to say as well. Really, really appreciate the chance to get to share the mic with you today, learn from you today, and uh, enjoyed watching you fly, Jughead. It was super fun, and I hope that we can uh, we can do it again. I sure hope we can. I got to thank Sport Aircraft Seats for helping get me down here in comfort and always getting me home in comfort. If you're looking to upgrade the seats in your airplane, give uh, give Daniel a call, Sport Aircraft Seats. Ryan, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been great. Let's wrap it up, everybody. Awesome. Thanks for coming out. Have a great time. God bless you. See you later.